to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Growth and um, and development whether it is spiritual whether it is physical any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm to another never occurs by default please take notes this this is just to establish something before we get to the word that means that it is not possible physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that that the only thing that grows automatically is your age every other thing must be engaged to grow you don't have to do anything to add to your age once you are alive and the time comes the year recycles you are plus one ready or not but every other thing your spiritual life please listen your relevance your understanding your transformation every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible that means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself you cannot say it happened by mistake are we together if saul becomes paul and is mightily used by God. It's not just that God chose him. Uh -uh. That growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths. I will continue to drum it in this house. Why? Because you see the principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. Please understand this. The principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. They are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it. It is our pursuit of God and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We will never exhaust the knowledge of God but as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance that make for our usefulness the principles are finite this should be good news for someone because it then means that I can allocate time and know these things so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing God no longer learning principles a time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with god not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that no and this is what by the grace of god god is helping us achieve in this place if you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard or they are so infinite are we together the principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned please listen to me they are captured in this truth and they are finite they are finite that means that you can collect them that body of information and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned god has helped you it is not when you will or if you will arrive is when you will arrive 
at that point your life is reduced to worship and praise your learning is god your subject is god not prosperity are we together not how to parent children not how to succeed not how to engage restoration not how to speak peace it's a cause if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things because god as a subject is worth your lifetime all of these auxiliary things about god that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory are you getting what i'm saying now you will never be able to centralize your pursuit on god and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life children here different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage it will distract you all these things are the things around god they are not god they are his ways my phone is not me it's around me you can learn how to use my phone it doesn't mean you know me are we together now so we must trust god for grace accelerated grace to be able to capture these things establish their results in our lives and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned it is god only god ever are we together it was a preacher that taught us he says of reading many books there is no end and he says much learning is a weariness to the flesh then he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commands he said this is the whole duty of man let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not that he bought a car not that he bought a house are we together not that he raised children well all of these things are important but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you must trust god for grace and quick understanding isaiah 11 and verse 2 quick understanding you can understand late it's still not a blessing understanding will bless you if it is quick because everything in life is time tagged you don't have all the time spending all my life learning about money learning about greatness learning about leadership as important as those things are you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek god if our generation does not learn this we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter we will have principles of a b and i teach you principles all the time but the principles are supposed to help you stabilize so that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat what to wear how to be great the principles are finite now you can focus on him he becomes your object he becomes your pursuit he becomes your everything this is the place of power this is the place of true relevance because let me tell you this everything in your life minus the knowledge of god will still leave that vacuum you know many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus god you will still be able to go around because we say those in the world there are people who don't love god and yet they are rich you need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without god god designed man to be frustrated without him it's his design it's part of his intelligence he designed it to be impossible to be fully fulfilled if he's not in that factor that equation so when someone tells you i'm doing well without god that person is a liar i'm telling you it's only a matter of time riches can deceive they are important you see 
how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child your child will enjoy that bicycle even the injury will not matter but two weeks later you see that bicycle in the rain he has exhausted it and it's all right that's how life is without god you can get a certificate and be happy and after five years the same thing you laughed at you now hate it because it seemed not to give you what you thought it would produce then you turn your pursuit to something else finance and then you press through and make all the money and ignore god and then for a while you are happy because you are buying properties and you can now be at the priority level of living and then very soon you will find out that things cannot be god hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now please listen then you can choose to replace things with people like a husband like a wife like children like physical earthly relationships and they will bless you for a long time except for the fact that the jealousy of god preserved a dimension only his size can feel no matter what else in your life you bring i tell you this it will take time but you will know that life without god is not living you're all i want you're all i ever need you're Listen, let me tell you how God trains us. When you start your spiritual journey, it is God. Then when you know a bit about him, he will help you to know his ways. And the end of your life should be like the beginning, back to God. So it is God. But then he gives you the things that pertain to life, him, godliness. But he knows that somewhere along the line, your children need to go to school. You need to eat. So he will delve from him. He's still there. But the focus for many years will be his ways. And many times we, for, we forget that his ways is not the ultimate. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. Say the scriptures testify. A way leads to somewhere. So when all is said and done with the cars and the fame and the accolades and everything, God says, I kept my part. Five years of your life, I didn't bother you so much again. Here and there you had encounters, but now that you know my ways, now that you are not thinking about money again, now that you know what it takes to raise your children, can I have my time back? And he said, Lord, I became famous on my way and I found out that my fame is better than this, this, this me and you. I, I started in innocence, but as I continued, I found out that there was fame on the way. And now I'm no longer interested in you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Even learning the ways of God as the ultimate pursuit is still not the perfect strategy. The ways of God are important, but at the back of your heart, please hear me, the end of your spiritual journey must still be the way you started. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. That's what it means to be Alpha Omega. So right now we are in a season where you no longer may be having the dreams you used to have again. Remember those times, it was not about principle or anything. You were not seeing any attack. It was just all of those encounters. And it seems to be suspended for a while to allow you to be relevant within the context of your... It's not backsliding. He's showing you his ways. Sometimes some of you will still go back and say, Lord, I want it before. He says, I know. I'm waiting for you at the other side so that means if you focus on knowing his ways is proof that you really want to meet him fast so that you will finish with these matters 
and it will give you room to say, Lord, I'm done. I didn't know that I can be established fast. By the grace of God, I do not have to cry for what to eat again. I'm not coming to you complaining about an attack. I've conquered that. I've found the keys that give me victory. Lord, I am here with you for fellowship. What do you want, son? You, you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It is not only being an unbeliever that can keep you away from God. Lack of quick understanding can keep you away from God. You will be close to him, but not with him. You are around him learning everything. Imagine that I come to your house and all I keep doing is going to your kitchen. I can eat your yam. It's your yam, but it's not you. I can go and use your restroom. I can even drive your car. I will leave your house saying I met you. It's a lie. I didn't meet you. I met the things around you. Those things are called conveniences. When you go to see a guest, you don't go there to eat. But then in seeing that guest, sometimes before he arrives, they will serve you. Does it happen to you? They will say, okay, this, what would you like? Sometimes they will even call you to a table. If you get carried away by the buffet and you sit there and forget that there is a meeting, you spent three hours there. It was just supposed to solve your problem so that when you spend that time seeing him, hunger will not distract your concentration. God knows that it's better to serve him in your house than a rented apartment. So in as much as you start there, you say, son, let me show you my ways. Not to compete you with Bill Gates. It's a foolish agenda. It's a purposeless, kingdomless agenda. There is no glory to God competing with Bill Gates. Or that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to rise to a point where the ways of God are mastered so that you reduce sky. Look, my brothers and my sisters, listen to what I'm teaching you. The ways of God are powerful. But if you stay there, you will not know God. And at the end of it, you will live your life in a void that will frustrate you. I asked for children, you gave me children. I asked for a job, you gave me a job. Listen, I asked for promotion, you gave me promotion. I asked to be a celebrity and you took me to the nations. I asked for money, you gave me money. I asked for dollars, you gave me dollars. I asked for revelation, you gave me revelation. Listen, I asked for word of knowledge, you gave me. I asked for miracle power you gave me. And then after all of that, God steps back, different from everything you've had, and say, I'm still here. And many times we say, Lord, do I really need you again? Do I need you? Whatever I cannot do, I can outsource. I have the influence. And God stands back and says, was this all I meant to you? Yes, it is true that I am the way, but I am not only the way. The way is how you start. It should lead you to life. It's a person. The passion with which many people and the slow rate of spiritual transformation is becoming dangerous. It's one thing to be in ignorance, but it's another thing to transit slowly. Time is running and time is fixed. The next 20 years of your life, if you are still learning what you are learning now, it's no longer a blessing. Imagine a man of 45 years in primary school. Say, I can make it. There's, yes, you can make it. There's nobody that says you cannot make it. But you will be sleeping while they are teaching because your body does not expect you to be at that level. While they are teaching the children, spell uh, this and that and that, you will be a nuisance to the people and it will not be your fault. 
let me tell you this the prayer for speed is a real prayer most believers pray for speed because they have a passion to make a statement either to loved ones let people in my family know i am this as good as that is it's not a very valid reason speed that god can establish a man early 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 what is the purpose of delay something an effect on your time not you your time i hope you realize that all satan is really interested in is your time hmm. so he uses you to do something to your time are we together the ways of god are very important but the ways of god is not god in the beginning god in the beginning god i am alpha omega why am i sharing this because we are in the face of our lives now when we should focus on learning the ways of god first please hear what i'm saying there are many believers who think that every time we teach on the principles of the kingdom it should be encounters all the way no you'll be frustrated the matters that pertain unto life will hit you and will derail you no matter who you are it's not something you can do anything against you may be wicked to yourself but when you watch your children ask you questions you cannot answer it will dry down your life you see a lot of people will tell you in 1995 i was the prayer secretary of so 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 fellowship and right now the person is not even born again he said god was not there for me i served god but now when it had to do with god blessing my own family he left me and god said no you didn't understand the sequence it starts with me then at a point i step back to let you learn my ways so that you can obtain the things that need to give you the freedom and the liberty to return back to me occasionally these things can distract you that's why retreats are powerful because they take you back and that presence and that atmosphere once again god says i'm still here woe betides a man who spends his whole life chasing things 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 to look for a car for a lifetime is not an achievement that at the end of your life if i say what did you get I have five estates, 21 degrees, 30 children, eight wives, chieftaincy titles, traveled around the nation, and God is just waiting for his name, and he's not in the equation of your destiny. That's what many of our loved ones did. They started with God. But when God was calling them to learn his ways, they thought it was the devil. And they casted God away and said, Lord, I will keep learning your ways. And hunger forced them to leave God. To get back to learn his ways. And the spirit of revelation was not there. And so their pace is slow. And right now they've been 40 years trying to learn how to be rich. 40 years trying to learn how to be leaders. 40 years trying to learn how to be great. So when you say, let's, let's spend time worshiping God. Let's spend six hours praying. The person looks at you and says, are you stupid? Six hours praying. What am I telling God? All that I've been telling him, is he not listening to? It doesn't make sense to invest that kind of time when you are hungry. When you are starting out, God will allow it for a reason. You notice how great ministries start. They usually start with these moments of encounter. That's how we started. You understand? God will not tell you anything about money, marriage, children, prosperity, increase, influence, ministry, ethics, greatness. Leave all of that. It's just him. People coming back with dreams, visions of heaven, encounter, and so on and so forth. But where many people miss it is they do not sustain the intelligence to observe the transitions. Listen, prayer groups, listen, ministries, listen. This is where we miss it. Because many times we think just because God is the object of the pursuit. When he now tells you, 
Start learning my ways. Sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't need it. Because of the excellency of his presence and he understands. That's why how you are mentored matters. There is a pattern of growth. This is what is happening to some of us right now. You got born again since 95. And the only thing in your life now is that you know God. Right now, you are not even sure you know God again. Why? Because you suddenly discovered that while you were serving God, when you started, somebody was giving you a harvest, whether you sowed a seed or not. And now you've been left alone. The reality of being the breadwinner of your family will not even allow you to spend time with God. And Satan likes it so. That's why you hear people say, I used to be on fire before I got married. And this foolish husband or this stupid wife that I've married is the reason why I no longer can love God. No. You used to spend time worshipping God, but now you have to dedicate 10 years of your life giving birth to children. 10 years is not 2 days. 10 years taking care of the children. You just sense that presence you used to send when you were in secondary school. And here's your baby crying too with the presence. And God says, attend to the baby. Oh Lord, but that sweet face. Mm -mm. Attend to the baby. If you attend fast, you will have time with me. But if you, if you pay the price and leave that baby, he will force you to leave me tomorrow. Listen to me. It is not error when God switches you to learn his ways. Hear me. Hear me, believers. It is not error when God just, he does not take himself out of your life, but he focuses you on his ways to say, learn this. You need it. You need it for your daily bread. You will encounter things that will bring delay in your life. So my son, buy a book on restoration. Add it to your spiritual archives. You will need it tomorrow. You will be attacked by the devil. You must learn the principles of warfare. And for four months, all you who all is just worship and God says, you will not even get a new song as a worshiper. Worshiper. Four months, no new song. And God is teaching you on warfare. And the devil can say, I hope you are not backsliding. God says, no, the songs will come when you give me time. But for now, is it not with money you will buy the keyboard? Learn what will help you set up the studio and you can lie down there alone without a landlord knocking your door. So Satan comes as an angel of light and says, have you stopped seeking God to seek things and that guilt will turn you back and time is going. I am telling you that voice that looks spiritual is Satan masquerading as an angel of light using the regalia of religion to stop you from learning the ways of God. Many of us would have been better spiritually now but because sincerely so, you wanted to seek God but you just, I, I, this business seminar and business seminar or prayer retreat, choose one is a prayer retreat. The Holy Spirit said go there for the business. But Lord I'm used to spending time at the back of my, my house. Is this not backsliding? And he says no, I'm the one guiding you. And sometimes religion will draw you away. And then when those who were in that business session are now rolling on the floor, you will be around trying to look for who to help you. And your wife looks at you and says, what kind of God did you serve? That's the question many people are asking in our families. You were a reverend for 30 years. How did God work with you that your life is such a failure? And the result is to blame God. This is what we say. Lord, you failed me. Lord, you failed me. I spent 20 years giving my life for you. 20 years. So you begin to love God and worship God every day. And then sooner or later, all those visions of the presence begin to diminish. And then God begins to say, sweetheart, it's time for you to start learning how to be a wife and a mother. Lord, let, let carnal things not distract me. I need your presence. God says, yes, he's a gentle spirit. But don't forget that you are going to get married. Learn the principles. And you say, no, 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 no. I don't need to. Your presence will give me everything. You say, yes, it's my presence that is now recommending my ways to learn. And that person will be a worshiper and a prayer warrior for many years until marriage comes. Then she gets married 
and the man returns by six o'clock. Sweetheart, where are you? And there's a song playing in the other room. And then the man says, what are you doing? Say, his presence. That's, that's, all, that's all I desire. So why did you marry me? Listen carefully. And then you now say, this man is a devil. He's out to destroy my life. And Satan says, thank you for giving me a jackpot in this family. He will wreck that family to pieces. The ways of God are his wisdom to guide you so that you can settle the things that pertain unto life and then you can focus on him. I thank God for giving me this understanding. I am obsessed with balance. I've taught you again and again. Imbalance is as destructive as error and ignorance. This ministry by the grace of God We are where we are by the privilege of God's grace because of the understanding to navigate these seasons. I will never forget, Ejimisi, uh, and you will testify. You know, because of the way God started those days with me and, you know, you know, all those that were there, a time came when God started teaching me these things. Even me, myself, I felt guilty because all I wanted was his presence. I would go in the night browsing Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. Enter in a cafe with my fluffy disc. If I see anything that looks like Shekinah on an ark, I'm downloading it. I don't even want to know whether he's talking about, just download it. And then a time came when in a very strange way, the passion began to diminish. I fasted my life and I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this? And the Spirit of God told me, it's now time to learn the ways of God. I remember when I started proposing some of these things. Around those times, you know, I remember I suffered my own share of persecution. A lot of people just began to propose, this guy has backslidden. He didn't start like this. I know well, they didn't call me apostle then. I mean, somebody who will pray for hours now is sitting down. You are talking about finances. You are talking about leadership. These things are a sign of backsliding because if you are really, you should be fresh. I agree. And time. There are many people who were born again before that are not even born again. again. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. It's not the enemies that fight them. Hunger. Listen very carefully. If I ask all of you right now, and I say those who are really trusting God for a job, if you know that joblessness is pinching you and paining you and you are angry about what is doing to your spiritual life if i ask you to stand up you'll be you will see those who they will stand up with the attitude you will know they are really angry say lord I, 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 i've been serving you what is all this one that means something there is affecting your concentration and i have a responsibility to show you the ways of god and to show you fast so that by the grace of God we can spend time and spend our lives mentoring a generation on how to live listen to me there are many things I've said that people have thought was pride some of them are now manifesting today Micah chapter 4 is the prophecy for our generation and that's one of the things that God is doing with this ministry. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Micah chapter 4, please. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. Verse 2. And many nations. How many? nations here don't just talk of countries they talk of systems shall come and say come no invitation no invitation 
come, let us go up to where? The mountain of the Lord. To where? The house of the God of Jacob. That means the place of encounter. But we are not going there just for encounter. We are going there to carry over a cause we ignored. And he will teach us of his ways. The God of encounters. We encountered him, but we ignored his ways. But now we see a mountain that has both encounter and his ways. He says, come, he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. A day will come when the pride of men will fail them. A day will come when the imbalance of men will haunt them. A day will come when the inaccurate spiritual pathway that people are taking will show. And God is building an ark and telling you a flood is coming. When Jesus called the disciples, look at how he trained them. He called the disciples and started by doing a little introduction of himself. Then he stopped and started teaching them his ways. Let's go up the mountain and he teaches them the beatitudes, the ways of the kingdom. He taught them his ways so much that one day he said, who am I? Who do men say that I am? They say, thank you. Because this thing has bothered us too. We have learned how to be the light and soul. But who are you? John was so distracted, he forgot who he was. He didn't know that when you learn his ways, you go back to him. And he was offended. He said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should we seek another? Do you not see that at the end of men's life, when Paul finished knowing his ways and did his exploits, he returned back that I may know him. It's a, it's a principle. Paul did everything. I, I've, I've learned them. He was in the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Learned the ways of God. When he was ready, he said, let's go. They killed him. He took himself back to life and got up and finished everything. And at the end, he said, look, this is it. But Lord, that I may know your ways. Moses was at the backside of the mountain. The progression, an encounter. When he encountered him, God said, take your attention from me. Let's go to your rod now. This is about the wonders you. And Lord, I'm looking at you. Forget about the burning bush. You have seen me. But let me show you what you will do with this rod. And the attention went from the bush to the rod and he trained him on that rod he said now stand up leave me leave the bush and go somewhere you will come back i will meet you again but for now he would have stayed there and circled that bush and said i would die on this bush oh your face oh jesus when jesus appeared unto saul of tarsus he gave him an encounter then he says go to the house of judah wait there someone will come and begin to guide you on the ways of the kingdom ananias came and he was filled with the holy spirit his eyes were open and he started learning by revelation and when he learned at the end of his life that i may know him john the beloved started like the apostles knowing him and then later he learned his ways by the time we get to the end of john's life it was full of encounters this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And he begins to talk about the divine life. Then in the Isle of Patmos, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw, I have seen him again. He told me, you will see me again. I will come to you again. You need to know this about the progression of growth. It's a powerful secret. It starts with him. And then when he starts with you, a time comes, he says, now, just knowing my face is not enough to solve the matters that relate to life. Therefore, I will, like, like a, a preliminary course that you will take in another department for a while. If you go to that department and remain there, you are supposed to take the course, get the knowledge, and return back. I don't want to spend my life even doing ministry. Because ministry is not an end, is a means.
to an end the end is him listen to me this will help you to know why week after week we continue to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom and every once in a while you'll find out that we'll have extreme moments where God's presence will come mightily and just interrupt the service and allow periods of extended worship just to remind us don't be distracted with the ways and then he will step back again let the teaching continue those who follow that path are beginning to see certain results in their lives you can have the luxury today to lock yourself and you and your children can serve the Lord as for me and my house he says we will serve the Lord you will not serve the Lord when you are hungry because a borrower is slave to the lender the rich will rule over the poor please listen to me many believers miss it at this point they start well with God and then when the Holy Spirit begins to tell them now it's time for us to move to begin to understand the ways of God they think sometimes it's an error no why should I buy a book on relationship I need books on his presence why should I buy a book on management why should I buy a book on church growth I need a book on heaven mine is just heaven and God says it's true but just calm down let me show you my ways Lord I know you are going to call me and because of the encounter I'm having I will have a global ministry God says potentially that's true but that global ministry works on systems. Let me teach you something. Please just amplify. Can you change the sound? I just need something I can hear. Listen. Help us Holy Spirit. When Joseph came. Listen. Joseph was the deliverer of Israel. I hope you know how Joseph delivered Israel. He brought systems that preserved that economy. Is that true? Joseph left them with a prophecy. He said, when you are going out of Israel, carry my bones. He was not just saying, carry my dead bones. The systems that kept you here, carry it along. Don't leave it behind. Bone struck of systems and structure. There was something that happened that gave this thing structure over my leadership. I know God is calling you to go to a land thrown with milk and honey as his own people. But on the way, you will need the knowledge of this. Carry my bones. Carry it. Why, why will you dig a man? It's not because the land was cursed. No. Carry my bones. Carry those structures and those systems. So while... You are serving God and you see a book on financial intelligence. Don't throw it. Just keep it. A time will come as you are transiting. Let it be part of your library. For now, you are focusing on God. And God, you want to study a book on marriage and God said, no, 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 no. Let's continue the seven days dry fast. It will not always be seven days dry fast. All the movement of heat and cold in your body, it won't happen like that forever. It's a system. You are in a season where he's exposing you to himself. So all your prayer is full of visions. My hands are shaking. My legs have cold and heat. Carry the bones. You will need it. A day will come when the shaking will no longer be there. A day will come when you will not be falling around the way you used to fall before again. A day will come when for a strange reason the strength for 10 hours in prayer will not be there and you will search your heart and it's not backsliding remember that God must be the governor and the coordinator of your growth not religion you allow men they will delve you into error sincerely so I watch with shock and I watch with pain in my heart the way so many young people especially in Africa continue to corrupt this part of growth they leave Joseph's bones and when they get to the wilderness they do not know how to call for bread again are we together this ministry by the grace of God runs on systems and structures 
and it has afforded the opportunity to serve God and serve his purposes I can imagine the level of distraction that would come into my life if all I focused on was just his face and I ignored his ways let me tell you what we would have done by now I would have carried an offering basket and walk around and say I'm hungry I love God have you been blessed by my anointing yes pastor alpha you all of you people here it's one one million I'm, I'm, I'm not it's not as the spirit leads it's not that I'm bad this is how we carry over in life a day will come when your wife will tell you what kind of a man of God are you and you will get angry and all of a sudden you will start choosing where to go and minister there's one powerful campus minister with campus how much are the students going to give me campus minister to many zealous but broke students and the spirit of god is saying i want to birth a revival on that campus but you look at your pocket and he says there is another ministration is, is happening in the u.s and i mean the 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 priority service from nigeria to u.s alone is enough to bless you there's no hearing god again and all of a sudden you leave those poor people and a revival is destroyed because a man did not understand the ways of god imagine that i went to honor ministrations today because of the honorarium they give it's a terrible thing you don't have to, you will be angry what of the ones that cannot give you anything but you know it was the will of god after you finish preaching you see what they give you i say how much is this? say it by yourself how much say sorry sir you see we were able to raise it you, you see it and that bitterness will choke the anointing out of your life i'm not just talking the area of finances alone have you not seen preachers that resign from ministry because they could not be able to raise their children well sometimes they ignore the children when God was saying, train up a child, they were hearing that word. They casted it. They were buying worship tapes. Bob Fitz, Don Moen. It's important. Don't get me wrong. And then while they were in the presence, Satan was with the children. That's what happened to the American society. When God teaches people certain things, he said, teach your children. Write it. Your children will ask you questions. Make sure you teach them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This imbalance has punished a lot of us. I've seen men and women of God who organize meetings. And after the prayer and fast, members don't bring money. They only bring vision. Sir, I saw the meeting. is success. It is done. And he said, do you know how much the board that is? He said, it is done, sir. I'm telling you, I know what I saw. And he will pray with you and go back. And you stand there and say, God, did you call me or not? And God says, remember seven years ago when I told you to settle down and learn my ways. You criticize me, God, and you criticize everything. And because I respect your will, I said, all right, you continue. And now the deficiency of knowing that way of God is telling on you now. So you are anointed, you have encounters. But you cannot build a church that works because you know nothing about leadership you thought it was unnecessary until while you are preaching someone is fetching the money of the church and you think that god is that dull to have allowed it happen you're not knowing his ways then you find out that you never can be able to have up to 100 members what is wrong i'm anointed i just came back from heaven remember i said so what you will continue going to heaven and coming back and finding out that there is no growth because something about the system is not there so when jesus was born at age 12 he was in the temple learning learning and then at age 30 he comes to be empowered and begins to do ministry and then he returns back to God from where he came. It is God, his ways, God. Listen, God, his ways. His ways does not mean you will leave him. It doesn't mean you will not pray and you will not fast. No. 
but God, because you are governed with time, you cannot do everything at the pace you started and have the time to. It takes time to learn. You may pray 10 hours every day and instruction from God for five months. But you do that that way, you will not have the time for other things. So you will find out that God has a system because even that did not happen by your strength. And so God helps you. Then you begin to learn. The Holy Spirit says, go to a catering school. You say, God forbid. With all these visions I'm seeing. Until you see that it destroys your life. Son, I need you to learn. I don't want you to, to be an inefficient person. You have to learn the laws of greatness. And you say, Lord, I'm going to the nations. You are not going alone. There are people there and not all of them are born again. So he needs to teach you how to be a sheep among wolves. Lord, I don't care. All I know is that I'm going to be great. Apostle has said it. We will all be great and we all know ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's true. But you must know his ways. So here you are as a born again person. And then you have the opportunity to meet a man, a captain of industry. And you do not know the principles of relationship. You don't know the principles of friendship. You don't know how to translate the reality of God's life to relate to a context. And you stand there. This is an opportunity to not just win a man, but win an industry to Christ. You know him, but you're not knowing his ways. I love Jesus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. He would have said, wonderful. Nicodemus said, verily, verily. I mean, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. So on and so forth. And when he led that Nicodemus, do you know that Nicodemus was a secret follower of Jesus? He learned his ways. He shall teach us his ways. Koinonia, hear me. You must understand the way God is training you. Sometimes you see us sit down and for over one or two months, all the emphasis is on finance and the rest. And sometimes I can almost discern that when these teachings are coming, here's the spirit of religion again. Two months teaching on money. is money everything. We, we need the presence of God. I see the joy on some of your faces as soon as I stand and I say, the Lord is showing me something. And someone is shouting, you know, people that this is koinonia. Now these are koinonia, not this backsliding version. And you keep allowing the spirit of religion. You see, a student does not define the curriculum. No, your job is to sit in the class with your heart open. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Listen, you will thank me for what you are learning. Because you will pastor a people who are balanced. After service, they have cars to go back home. They have houses that they can serve the Lord in. They have influence enough to bless the Lord. Yet in the midst of it, they will roll from pillar to post. Do not allow the spirit of religion destroy your peace. Do not allow the spirit of religion to corrupt you. Do not even allow the biases and the imbalances that we carry as men of God to corrupt the accuracy of your pursuit. There is only one architect who designs this pathway. Jesus himself. The author, the finisher. A lot of people see what God is doing in and through my life around the body of Christ. A man of God asks me and says, Apostle, you are a very strange man. There are different churches that you can go to and minister. How do they accept you? Is it that they don't listen to your message in other churches? For instance, maybe a very conservative church. I can finish a conference there right now. And the very next meeting may not be as conservative as. Is it that they don't know? It's not usual for people to receive guests like that. And I tell them there is something he taught me about the body. It's a mystery. 
your results show what you know or you don't know when the body receives you there is a grace there is knowledge that has come this is what i'm teaching you so you don't become a christian that will because of your imbalance as a man of god you join the campaign of fighting every other person too who are you for paul or apollos are you seeing that now and many of us have been raised that way sadly oh i am not this man of god this one in this country is my papa this one is my this this one in my and you join the campaign of fight whereas there is something you can know and the gates of the body as an entity can be open for you is god blessing you this is what you are learning my brothers and my sisters you are learning principles principles i bless the lord for granting me the grace to be the one teaching you this because see if i didn't walk in the anointing it usually will mean that i'm trivializing those things because they are not captured in my life that's why it's powerful to be balanced because your teaching will be believed you have a system of defense for every dimension hallelujah tomorrow i'm in mina sunday i'm in mina monday i'm in abuja tuesday i'm in eboy wednesday i'm in eboy i'm coming back on thursday imagine let's be honest in the name of honesty imagine if i had only two clothes and ten thousand naira for chisco transport do you I, 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 I please i'm not i'm not is this not i just want you to think sincerely do you know how i will be forced to manipulate those people i will carry the anger of my pain and say something god did not say and preach something god did not preach not because i am bad and then here is the risk all through the road in the night 12 hours you preach back to back 12 hours you are back and then everything starts again it's not a blessing i can tell you it's not a blessing you will never be able to have time to seek the lord imagine that you want to have a bible study and commit yourself and someone is quarreling and they are raising their voices and distracting you you are in a vision you don't even go far you are back because the noise koinonia let me tell you what god is making out of your life you will love what you are becoming you may not love the training now but my brothers and my sisters listen to me god's integrity is back of what is happening to you and a day will come people will look at you and say sir why are you such a man of god what what's responsible for the balance and and the depth of efficiency and you will tell them let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength and let the rich man not glory in his riches but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me my journey starts with God but I'm careful enough to observe the things that he's teaching me that will be responsible for my results and it will recycle time back to help me serve the Lord there are times that I prepare an average of 18 to 20 sermons per week 18 to 20 sermons a week aside from specialized sessions and counseling sessions you ignore this that i'm teaching you a day will come you will not have messages again as a man of god and you say it does not matter and then members will leave and you will call it an attack because you do not know the ways of god they know not neither will they understand psalm 82 and verse 5 they walk on in darkness
darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course he said but have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes like you to pray you won't believe that i've not even started my sermon for this night i, I, I didn't even realize that the time had gone but i like you to passionately cry think of your children while you are crying think of those called to your destiny while you are don't be selfish it's about you but not all about you cry to the lord lord i thank you for revealing a dimension of yourself but now that you are teaching me your ways give me the grace to stay give me the grace to stay lord i thought the time that i've been spending in the last two years studying i've even been afraid why are the visions not coming like before again now i'm learning that it's a season and a phase it's not necessarily proof of backsliding I have come to a point where you are working on me. You are giving me intelligence to be effective. Please pray. I want to inspire a generation to reflect you correctly. Hmm. Abarada kata proska de balash. Hebrande gede la kato sada brahas kadabai. My children should not suffer while I seek you. My family should not suffer while I seek your face. It takes time to know you. Oh God, awaken me from slumber so that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. So that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. I don't want to spend my life chasing after mundane things. Chasing after money. Chasing after power. That at the end of your life, when you should be seeking him, you are now learning his ways. They that seek me early, early, they that seek me early shall find me. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. They are not information to those who find them. They are information to those who hear them. But they are life to those who find them. The kingdom of God is like a pearl that is missing. And someone lights a candle and begins to sweep that room. And when he finds it, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man finds gold in a property and goes to sell all he has to buy it. There are ways to redeem the time. Listen, let me tell you. Look at me. In the 60s and the 70s, nobody, people took jobs for granted right from 500 level or 400 level. You could come with jobs nobody knew that today will be an information age a digital age that will replace jobs 
So people had the luxury to not focus on some things. But times have changed. And the sons of Issachar. It, it, there is a generation of Issachar that had the understandings. The, the fact that God is not doing a thing the way he did 30 years ago. Does not mean he's, the one, he's not the one doing it. Listen, let me teach you this. For every dispensation there is a strategy. When Samson, listen. When Samson saw the Philistines. The spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took the jawbone of an ass, a donkey, and he killed all of them. When he killed the Philistines, he looked at the bone and threw it. Why do you throw what works? I just used a strategy and defeated an army and yet I'm leaving it to wait for another one. Many of us will hold that bone and idolize it and even when the bone has no life again, you will keep moving with it. One time he will tell you, let the people go through the water. Other times he will tell you, stand still. There is always a strategy for every generation. Don't borrow a strategy that is not applicable. Joshua had to wait. What is the strategy to bring down Jericho? And he said, this one is not about warfare. Let the priests lead the way. This is the strategy. There are times that the men of war would lead the way. There were times it was not just the priest, the worshippers. What is the strategy for this generation? Do you know? Or do you believe it's the same strategy for everyone? It's a joke. God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the fathers hath in these last days, in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he has appointed to be heir over all things. So there was a time in sundry times and diverse manners he used a strategy but in these last days there is a strategy. Just because a strategy worked does not mean God is interested in using it again. Give us this day. Not give us once and forever. Give us this day. For every day there will be a strategy. Oh Elijah, for a while it will be at Brook Cherith. That's the strategy for your survival. Position yourself at Brook Cherith and a raven will come. But the, the, the brook is dried up. Elijah, hear the word for another strategy. Otherwise, you would die at Brook Cherith. Whereas God has relocated your blessing through another strategy. You held the jawbone of an ass. It killed in 1960. It killed in 1970. But the arsenals of hell changed their strategy. And we refused to go back. Because we learned the principles very slowly. And we ignored the presence. Many people are applying principles that do not have a corresponding power in the realm of the spirit. That is why the results do not show. I remember the time, and I say this respectfully so, when God told me I want to open your eyes to see the key to church growth. I had not seen it. I, I'm, look, let me tell you something. I have studied the largest churches in every continent with all humility. The day I saw it, I said, this is it not the church growth of the fathers the church growth of the future the way they built the tabernacle in the wilderness was not the way they built solomon's temple the strategies are different the goal is that he inhabits them but the patterns are different listen to me if you get what i'm teaching you you will be blessed there are people generations past could ignore certain things but there are generations that if you ignore certain things in the 60s and 70s you could see a a trader keep banana or something and not even be there you will carry the banana put it in the leather and drop the money there but it says the times it says the days are evil are we together now You couldn't have somebody just come and cheat you and betray you and stab you for nothing because the pressure to make for that is not there but the hardship of men has helped them to invent wickedness 
didn't the bible tell you that the end times will be like the days of noah what characterized the days of noah wickedness multiplied and so you need the strategy you carry the naivety of decades past and you find out that you are on if you are unfruitful to the church listen let me tell you this i will use names respectfully and honorably papa Ia deboye represents the face of a generation are we together now he represents god and a dimension of his walking to a generation if i go to papa ee adeboye's generation no matter I've, I've ministered many many times in those circles and no matter how powerful my ministration is the people love me but they may not listen to my messages because david served his generation are we together even if i cut promises head and carry it and put it back are we together now it will never stop anybody from crowding and camping around redemption camp i went for a conference recently and we had to route through another way because two major ministries were having a regular meeting and the entire road was blocked it was a strategy for that generation everyone that caught the strategy the results have to show there are others who passed and didn't get it it's very clear they didn't get it so we must stand like habakkuk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower god what are you saying for my generation what is the strategy for survival what is the strategy for survival there were no facebook's to criticize a man of god those days but now oh god that is easy for darkness to attack a man what is the strategy Are we together now? Yes. People were a lot more loyal in the times of our parents than our time. They can love a man no matter what is right or wrong. But our generation is a vocal generation. A lawyer can stand up and say you are stupid for thinking we are idiots. He will listen to you and after service he will analyze your message and sue you to court. Because you abuse my privacy. There were certain levels of um, being raw and outspoken that our fathers could afford in their generation. You try it now, you will die because you are speaking to nations. They had the luxury to say certain things in certain ways. You are not bending the truth. You are receiving a strategy because you are speaking to people who are global in context and you must be able to translate divine realities to make meaning to a generation. You can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to those who are in your locality. When Jesus came and found an agrarian society, he converted the realities of the kingdom into agricultural terms to relate to the then civilization and they understood. Listen to me. Ministry is not just about the anointing. There is a skill. There is a science. There is a psychology. For effective ministry it's much more than just having the ability to do an exegesis of scripture it's a combination of many factors playing behind the scene people don't just love you because you are telling the truth mm -mm. it is not just truth itself that saves it is how it is presented you can serve me water please help me with this there are two ways to serve me water there is one way apostle please take water and drink you serve me water the water is not wrong but i will hate you because of your service you did not serve it to present honor you can do this to a footballer in the football field and he will not be angry it's the ethic of it in fact the skill of receiving it will be an accolade but now when you come to me and you carry this and throw it the same thing you did in the field that they clap for you you do it here they will curse you you must understand the intelligence that comes with territory and systems oh dear this is not a pastor's conference please sit down in the name of jesus sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down the spirit of this prayer and fasting is upon me Ah. 
second peter chapter one jesus You know, sometimes when I come looking, which one do I omit? And which one just boils in my spirit? And I'm looking, which one do I omit? And which one do I say? Because I truly, truly want you to get it. Many of you will have churches in the future. You will see how exceptional your churches will be. Yes, yes, yes. The grace that is upon you is, is too much for a member. No, God is training you. I mean, no, 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 no. This is not the grace that just keeps you. You are representing a nation and a territory. So you are listening for the sake of nations that might not be hearing now. Second Peter 1, help us Holy Spirit. Verse 2. Let me just tie up something and we'll pray this night. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. Read with me. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Stop. Read it again and stop at things. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. So, let's reverse it. All things are given unto us according or by his divine power. Listen carefully. All things are delivered to the saints. How? Faith is only a connector to his divine power. The system that makes for reception in the kingdom is the agency of his divine power. As powerful as faith is, faith is like a funnel. Are we together? The funnel connects the container and the one you want to put under. So that's what faith does. Faith in itself does not produce miracles, does not produce breakthrough. Are we together? Faith, you know, is just your conviction and the action you take to validate that conviction are we still together so the bible says according as his divine power let's walk this a little tonight that means there are results if i see arrive your life the agency that made it so regardless of what principle you obeyed the principle only made way for his divine power if his divine power cannot be released there is no performance I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Let me give you an illustration. Look up, please, everyone. What is inside this bottle? Water. I, I hope you know that there are different ways to package water. Are we together? Now, let me interpret this. Every time you are thirsty, what quenches the thirst is water. How it comes may be different. Are we together now? Yes. It can be packaged in a bottle it can even be packaged in in you know all kinds of ways but if at all your thirst is quenched the factor that quenched it is water the bottle that brought it and the system of packaging is not the issue is that the central factor that quenches thirst is what water so the bible says thank you according as his divine power listen carefully his divine power does not give some things. It gives what? That means you need to study what the Bible tells you. Gives all things. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. That means if I am not obtaining, I am not engaging something that makes available his divine power. Listen. Listen 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 if i prosper his divine power hath given me prosperity there's a set of kingdom principles i engage but then when i engage them what will come is still his divine power in physics we teach that energy cannot be created 
nor destroyed. I'm helping you prepare for jam tomorrow. For those of you who are writing jam, you'll be surprised to find out that that's your first question. <laughs> are we together now? But that it can be converted from one form to another. Are we, are we together on that? That means every time you see any manifestation of energy, it is the same energy. It is just different forms of it. That the same electricity can turn to power this and then can produce sound here. That means if I hear sound, energy made it so. If this fan is turning, energy made, I, 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 get, I get what I'm saying now. And so regardless of what result you are looking for, his divine power. The way you engage his divine power for different situations may differ. But that the factor that is responsible for giving the saints all things is his divine power. The more of his divine power that works in me, the more the possibility of obtaining all things become in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Follow me carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Spiritual understanding. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Popular scripture. Look up, please, and let's read. It's projected. One, two, read. Stop. Who is the him? God. So who has the ability? God's ability is not in doubt. Now unto him who is able to do uh -huh, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Stop. He's about to introduce a condition that can make all what he just said to happen or not. And the condition is according to the power that walks, not lives, not dwells, according to the power that walks, not according to the power that lives in us. Mm. The possibilities are not according to the power that you possess. It is the dimension of the power that is released. The power that walks, not the power that lives, not the power that resides. Listen to me. That's why we can have the same power we can have the same anointing and our possibilities are different because of the power that works, not the power that is in you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, 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 the power that is engaged, the power that is produced in us. Are we together? We can have the same Holy Spirit. But the power that is released through sister A, brother A, may differ. Hence, they are actualizing the possibilities that God said would be. Many times I have found out the issue is really not more power. It is the grace and the understanding to activate the power that resides within you. They did not need to go and bring new bread and new fish. Something was done and that in itself was enough. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please understand this. It is according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power not lives in us. If God spoke that way, it would be unfair. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? We have been made to drink of the same spirit. But the dimension to which we have released the power of God and the investments of the spirit within us differ. This is the difference. So my possibilities and your possibilities may differ. The factor is not God. The factor may not even sometimes be the anointing. It is, I have done something to make a greater room for the power to not just live, but to walk in and through me. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the power that we allow to find expression through us determines the possibilities that come. And there are many ways to make the power work in us. That's why we are spending these seven days to give room. I'll just tell you two quickly and we'll pray. One way that you can cause the power to be at work in you is through enlightenment and transformation. The power of God is limited to your belief system, your paradigm. I've taught you this. According to the power that works, that works, that works. I've given this example here. Some of our fathers, great fathers of faith who lived in the 40s, 50s and 60s, many of them were heavily anointed but because some of them did not go to school, some of them could not speak many languages. Are we together? The limitation in their mindset did not allow the power of God invested in them to be fully manifest. Now, those fathers, as crude as they were, they now anointed other younger people with an enlightened mind, with intelligence, and you see the potential manifesting enlightenment and transformation is one way to activate the power that works within you there are possibilities that will never find expression until they pass through an enlightened mind we'll soon pray come Sam Please look up, everybody. Sam, in this example, is a mighty prophet of God with a great prophetic grace. But Sam is not so enlightened in this example. Are we together? So his understanding of the word is very, very small. Or there's nothing there. And then his general enlightenment in terms of knowledge, in terms of the knowledge about life is small. We both have the same anointing. You are going to see that the possibilities that flow forth from our lives will be very different in spite of the fact that the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together now? Let me give you an example. Two of you, please come stand. Let's assume that this gentleman and lady, uh, husband and wife, are we together? Now, the Lord is revealing to me, watch this now. Sam can come as a prophet. The divine power is at work in him. And Sam can see a horn on this girl's head. What did he see? And he can see fingers like that of a witch. This is what his vision is telling him. There is no enlightenment to properly translate what he's seeing to the edifying of the people. So he will announce it from the limitation of his mindset. His sight was correct, but the divine power is limited. And he, can, he will just say, Madam, you are a witch and you are a devil. Oga, you married a witch and you've been smiling. Why will your business move forward? And he can even recommend that the way forward is what? This guy has misrepresented what God can do. God can do better than that. But because he is anointed but not enlightened, there is so much power in him, but very little is working. Are you getting that now? The only power that is allowed to work is the power to see. The power to interpret is not allowed. Because enlightenment did not activate it. Now, this guy is still a prophet of God, but he will keep destroying marriages in his church, for instance. Are we together now? Now, stand again. I have the opportunity to now prophesy. And I'm not only anointed, I am enlightened. Meaning that I understand the systems and the ways of God. Are we together? The moment I see a horn on this precious lady, listen, I know that there is a difference between bewitching 
there is a difference between being a witch and there is a difference between being manipulated by darkness. When I see this, my understanding helps me to interpret it well. And so I know that the problem is not this lady. She may be connected to something territorial that God is trying to show me. So I separate the influence from the person. Now more of God's power and possibilities can now flow by reason of my enlightenment. And by so doing, I can set this lady free. Are we together now? And then I can redeem this family. Still yet, I can even be more enlightened. And after I deliver them, I know that there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is preached. It's called deliverance through knowledge. It is not enough for this lady to be delivered from the spirit influences. I've taught you this. She must be reoriented to understand the ways of God, to know who she is in Christ, to help her understand the principles that make for victory. Three approaches, same anointing, his divine power. He's able to do this according, the power lives in us, but how much of it works in you? That will determine your result. So when your mind expands, more of the power of God can flow through you. Many times people come to me and they say, Apostle, more anointing. I say, what exactly are you looking for? I say, result. I say, do you really believe that if I pray for you, they don't even listen. They say, yes, sir. Just, just do it. And I say, mm -hmm. how many people prayed for you? A, B, C, D. Did anything change? No. That means that you are like a tap that has refused to open. They connected you to a dam, but you have limited the water to come by drops. Are you seeing that now? So you are wondering why a bucket has not been full even after two weeks because the water is limited to the opening. If I can help you open the more, you can fill the same bucket. You don't have to change the reservoir. That expansion. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. That's why we need enlightenment. Just because we are spiritual does not mean we ignore enlightenment. You can see how, for instance, God saves this marriage. Otherwise, if this enlightenment is not there, and I don't interpret it well, this man will go, you, do you think, will you eat your wife's food if you hear that kind of blind prophecy with no interpretation? And then she brings all kinds of things. Fish, fish, mermaids with fish. Say, you now brought the one from the sea for me this night. You would have even brought cow or something. We continue to make a fool of God's power because the enlightenment that makes that power a blessing is the same thing like power coming from Nepa or Nitel. Are we together? And then you have a wire just caught and somebody just touches it. It was not channeled properly and so it is not controlled well. This is it. You can be a pastor heavily anointed, but because of the low level of your enlightenment, the power of God may not be able to flow. Did you know, let me tell you something. Many dimensions of the spirit of God that is at work in my life is at work in the life of many people, especially young ministers around, and people hate them because there is the same anointing. The interpretation and the system of dispensing that power has been refined through enlightenment so that i can let the power of god flow in a meeting and i can let it flow in a way and manner that relates to the thinking of that ministry hmm. there are people who are very intellectual and seeing the power of god flow like that may create a lot of controversy and so you need to come like paul from the standpoint of a scribe and a pharisee the anointing will have to follow the channel of knowledge you are going to have to con to convince them by the soundness of theology and scripture that becomes the host by which that power flows they are able to receive it because the depth of your balance and your theological exegesis will keep them in awe and they will know that whoever must have received this level of intelligence this power must be of god notice how paul made his defense from city to city 
When he met ignorant people, he just said, this idol is the God you are looking for. When he met intelligent people, he said, no, don't call. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Pharisee. I'm learned. Everybody say enlightenment. It's very important. You don't go to talk to a team of business experts and, and entrepreneurs and great people around and you just stand and say, don't worry, just use your heart. Right now, as I'm speaking, somebody is going to shout, don't worry, you will not understand, you are unfruitful. They will drive you out of that place. You are anointed, but you are short-circuiting the power because enlightenment has not allowed a greater dimension of the power to work in you. Are we together? The second way you can allow this to happen is through prayer and fasting. Thank you. Prayer and fasting is a system that among other things principally deals with the issue of unbelief. But it can expand your capacity in the spirit. It is true. It is true. The disciples could not cast out a certain epileptic spirit. And Jesus told them this kind. That means there are many kinds. This kind, go ahead not accept. Listen, listen. Don't argue with Jesus. This kind, go ahead not. But by prayer and fasting. There were certain people who bound themselves and said they would not eat until Paul died. Prayer and fasting. There are, there are spiritual strategies that can allow more of the power of God that is resident within you to be activated and to be at work in you. When a man sets himself to pray and fast, it's not just starvation. My brothers and sisters, hear me. There is no man I know or woman of God that is being mightily used by God with genuine power, genuine power, genuine power that is not a student of fasting and prayer. It's a joke. There are certain spiritual loads you cannot carry until that stamina is there. Oh God, give me, give me. And God says, this thing will drop and crush you into pieces. But when you get to the place of prayer and fasting, it's like walking out. You may not know the changes are happening to you, but you just continue. So while you are praying and you are fasting, you are praying and you are fasting, many things are happening. And then you will see that there is grace. You may not even know until the day you go for a meeting and they say brother can you come and share in this fellowship and you come as a brother your name is about to change you just stand and say can we all rise up to pray and you find out that people cannot stand up again what happened his divine power god is saying you have given me more space now see what that more space can do let me tell you this when i started out in ministry we're going to pray i noticed that certain sicknesses and diseases will never go i never got testimonies in those areas it bothered me for a while i said god what is this there are gifts of healing yes i studied all of them tear lost born and at a point in time i studied i studied you know classifications of sicknesses i studied all kinds of rabbinical writings 39 straps on jesus 40 less one i studied them and this thing was not working pregnant women were never getting pregnant if i prayed even me i knew they won't get pregnant yet i was anointed how can people be falling under the anointing and certain possibilities were not coming i said lord what is the key and then god called me and said the anointing is there but your capacity is small i said i know the key Shakataskaba. You would think you are not doing anything. You just continue. You are expanding your capacity. A day will come, you will look at that woman. Whereas you would have prayed before as if you are fixing the tire of a car. Sweating around a pregnant woman to get her pregnant. If this thing is not there, it's not there. Jesus looks at the epileptic patient and rebukes a deaf and dumb spirit and is done. So we can be singing praise and worship in this place and this brother is sitting on a wheelchair and I come, man of God, man of signs and wonders, just because you saw one or two things in a crusade ground, 
you don't vet your capacity just say in, in my name they shall cast out devils and you even have the effrontery to tell the man uh, you think you are get beautiful do you know how long these guys were coming at from the hour of prayer not not from from lunch the hour of prayer and you would call the name of jesus and say stand up and they're already clapping for you in advance and you leave the guy and he's shaking walk the guy say, I'm will i lie and you just say sit down quietly let me tell you what went wrong please believe me it is never the power of god it is that the level of grace and anointing that needs to flow to correct that thing your capacity cannot carry it now many men of god will not be humble enough to receive this thing they will say this guy doesn't have faith it's a lie it's a lie i always take responsibility for miracles that don't happen And then as I began to stay with God the more, I started seeing certain possibilities. Newer testimonies and cases. I remember one of the most frustrating ones was this HIV thing. That thing would not go at all. And the people who always tell, test themselves and let me know. Sir, it's still there. Oh. Of course, will, will the people lie? And I got tired. I said, no, something, there has to be something wrong. See, let me tell you, when you love God and love people, you will not excuse lack of results. They will draw you back to the secret place. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I said, Lord, there has to be a way. And the Lord let me know. There are many factors, but the anointing is there, my son. But the capacity is small. You have eaten away some space. Huh? Yes. The power is flowing and food just stands like a customs officer. And the power cannot flow. But by the time you trust God for grace to scatter the walls of gluttony and open up your capacity, you will not even know that that case is represented in your meeting while there was a time i didn't just used to speak upon people and it will happen this creative dimension of the prophetic it was not there it was not intentional the results were not repeatable many men of god will not open up to you like this and share with you what i'm saying because everybody has his reputation i would speak to someone people would come and i cannot remember talking to them because i'm not i didn't even expect it to happen i just spoke at random Maybe one minor case that was under your grace was quickly answered. But you get to a point where you can tell him, go, I know you will come back with a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, it is not the mouth, it's the spirit, it's the capacity. This is what demons see. When demons look at you, they don't see your head, your shoulders, your knees, or your toes. They see your spirit man the largeness of your heart you may look tiny physically but boy they see what is there and you make one decree and you open up doors i thank god for the grace to do that today and i thank god for the levels that we continue to press because in this school you never graduate you just move higher and higher the day you graduate you you, you plateau there and you go down When I have the privilege to pray with people, I didn't like praying with people before. I like praying alone with God, but not praying with people because of the frustration. The results were there, but they were not many. Just like it's happening to some of you. Man of God, can you pray for me? Say, let's pray. You finish praying, no results, no testimonies. Can you believe God that in these seven days that something will tear open in you huh? that there can be a capacity please help her a capacity a largeness of heart listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is the size that you carry in the spirit hmm, that determines your result i'm telling you this 
if I pour water on this cup, it is only the size of this cup that can take. If anything outside that, it will just waste away. So sometimes it's not more anointing. It is, oh God, expand me. Expand me. Expand me. I'm tired of this level of testimonies. Headache, headache, headache here. And then all oh, my teeth. <clears throat> I, I need to shift nations. I need to stand and look over a family and say it has, it's, it has come to pass. Listen to me. If you're a man of God here, hear me. We are going to pray. Make sure you keep vetting what you are doing. Don't keep going to people's homes and waking them in the night. Doing night vigil from 10 to 5. And then at the end of it, two weeks later, they tell you nothing has happened. You say, let's do it again. Please, don't frustrate people. If that grace is not there, go and work on yourself. There are, some, there are some ministry publicity you should not do until you are ready. Healing service. Healing, healing, healing. Bring the sick. And we mock ourselves. 90 sick people come and only one person who is not even sure. He's not there. Abba. Is divine power. This ministry, you see, my brothers and my sisters, is sitting on a large, there is capacity in the spirit that makes for this. All the people you see come, it's not just because they like a man, it's more than that. There is capacity. There is capacity. There is capacity. There are certain regions you don't do certain kinds of ministries and go scot free. The devil will attack you and destroy that ministry. I'm challenging many of you. You are anointed, but your capacity is small. Your results show it. Your words don't carry power. You, there's too much talk. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. We need to settle down. Get this thing for real. Get real spiritual power. I've already been setting myself during this prayer and fasting to say, Lord, there are, there are dimensions. There are dimensions. Look at the way you have kept your fellowship small because where you stopped is where the fellowship stopped. It can't grow more than you again. Look at where you kept your prayer group. Because you are small, you continue recycling mediocrity and clapping for yourself. Oh, you are MOG. You are this, whereas there are heights and virgin dimensions in the spirit. You know, let me tell you, when I see men of God sometimes and I see our pride, I stand and I wonder. I said, compared to what result? Where is the result? When there are still families crying, where is the result? How many times did you pray for people? Do you know when people drop prayer requests here more than once? When I sit down and I hear people saying, I dropped my prayer request January. I dropped my prayer request February. I dropped my, it does something to me. I'm not saying you should know. I'm saying, ah, did you have to drop it three times to be answered? That if you come for koinonia once, once, it's enough for your miracle. The rest should just be growth. Once, not twice. The next time is you bringing someone else. Enlightenment is good. But many of us, our capacities are small. That's why you finish fasting. And as soon as you finish your prayer meeting, as you are lying down, the spirits come back again. The spirits are testifying something. Apostle, I prayed three days. As soon as I was lying down, the same spirit that used to oppress me came back. Let me tell you, there is a level of fire. My brothers and my sisters hear me. Let me tell you, even a madman does not enter fire by mistake. Jesus prayed all night. How long? How long, please? Not all day. I've told you about the mystery of the night. Capacity. It takes a long time. So that you don't fool yourself 
you just look at someone and feel you are falling down and falling down you are the same it's a joke it's a big it's a serious joke there are people who can speak over nations i prayed and cried for that grace I said, Lord, how there are regions that I may not have the opportunity to come more than once. Why should the people die? Capacity. This is the problem. It's too small. Too small. You are praying. Too small. You are speaking. It's too small. Laying hands. Too small. And so God cannot honor you. That grace is too small. Listen, it's time to come up here. Throw away the little, little results. Eh? Uh, thank God for the small results. But my brothers and sisters, we need to delve into something deeper. Deeper. The grace to change climates and change territories. Not saying a lot of talk that we cannot defend. There are still ailing people. Is there no bam in Gilead? You are getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. Five over ten. Is that a pass? They invite you into a family. Serve you lunch as a man of God. Take care of you. Even sow a seed for you. And then they say pray for us. And you pray and nothing happens. The spirits just watch you and nod their head. And you prayed in Jesus' name. Hi. Somebody needs to be angry and say, no more, no more, no more. Is it not a season of extraordinary fruitfulness? No more, no more. No more. No more. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
Lord, they call me apostle, but there's nothing apostolic about me. They call me prophet, but there's nothing prophetic about me. It can't continue like this. Is someone praying? Shanaka pakaratasi. Increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. According to the power. According to the power. According to the power. Thank you for yesterday's result. But Lord, I press to the challenges of today. Thank you for the healings of yesterday. Thank you for the miracles of yesterday. Thank you for the signs, the prophecy of yesterday. But Lord, I am dissatisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You know you have entered a new dimension by the things that begin to answer to you. When I call you and you do not come, it's called dishonor. It means you do not regard me. So when you call healing at a dimension and it does not come, when you call breakthroughs at a dimension and it does not come, is the realm of the spirit answering you. You don't have the capacity to make that demand. Listen, you're going to cry for this, for staying power. It takes stamina and grace. These things are not easy in the flesh. It takes grace. It takes grace. It takes grace. Lift your voice and pray. The stamina, the power that stays, oh God. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. Hallelujah. 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 Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah was a man like us. One thing separated him. He prayed earnestly, not casually, not circumstantially. He prayed earnestly that there be no rain and gave the timing three and a half years. Had he said ten years, there will be no rain on earth for ten years. Not by the will of God, by the dictates of a man. The largeness of your capacity. The largeness of your capacity. I'd like you to open your mouth. Start to correct things in your life. Start to speak over things. I disallow, I disallow. I disallow, I disallow, I disallow failure. I disallow weakness. Is someone praying? I disallow oppression over my family. I disallow poverty. 
I disallow hardship. Shabas kaba shala kato zabra, embre kato kapara to zezekete, embre kato skabarada bashata. I disallow failure in ministry. It shall not be like before. I enter a new season. I disallow joblessness. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayers and we're done. Lord, honor my life with strange results. Strange results. Whether you are a man of God or not, let it please you, oh God. Honor my ministry. Honor my business. A strange order. Notable results. Notable results. Notable financial results. Notable supernatural results. Outside, are you praying? Honor my life with strange results. Results beyond debate. Results beyond contesting. Results beyond argument. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Honor my church with results. Honor my fellowship with results. Honor my prayer group with results. Honor my family, my wife, my husband, my children. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to me. What are results? Supernatural workings of God's spirit. Possibilities that only God can produce. You are a man of God, you are a prophet, your eyes are blind, your ears are blind, you are not hearing, seeing anything. Abba! Listen, let me tell you this. The last prayer, you're going to say, Oh God, make me dissatisfied with this current level. Listen, 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 listen. There are many of us, your spiritual growth process was corrupted when they started giving you honorarium from one ministration. Whether people are blessed or not, they say, take 10 naira, take 20 naira. They now invite you to one fellowship and you stop growing. Come on, please. Or when you started a church, Papa, Apostle Joshua Selman, and you stop growing. Oh, everybody's listening to your messages around the world. That's child's play. You must get to a dimension where, like Samuel, you are a man whose word cannot fall to the ground. Lord, the dissatisfaction that will push me to the next level. Plant it in me. Plant it in me. Plant it in me. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. 
We know there's more that's found in you. More than little miracles. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you, and we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you, and we. It's in you, Lord. 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 We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more than found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more than found in you. So why is favor not coming? There is a dimension of his divine power. That needs to be released why are my meetings not characterized by the power and the presence of God there is a dimension there is a dimension of his divine power that is still missing look let me tell you my brothers and my sisters I like you to don't don't be too soft on yourself within this period you will not die carry something that the world will thank God on your life for. Don't, don't carry what to make you fight with others. Don't carry what to make you feel insecure when a man of God comes. No. God can grant you something solid upon your life. That your life becomes a praise to the nations. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Our time is gone. Listen, please let me encourage you sincerely. Whoever you love and you know, please let those, these seven days, prayer and fasting is not a koinonia meeting. This is a portal for the body of Christ to enter into dimensions of possibilities. No matter the sacrifice, that God can grant you grace to make. There are families that have been tied down. And the good thing is that we are stretching it down and wrapping up with our miracle service for April. How can you become the same? How can you remain the same? Come with definite expectations. Your marriage, sit with your wife, sit with your children. What are the things that we must see, not may see? His divine power is able to provide it. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you that the grace and the anointing that it takes to stay with God until your spiritual capacity is enlarged beyond your current realm I declare let that grace be released upon you
the spiritual experience that you need to be subject to immersed into that will expand your capacity to release the power of God that is vested within you in the name of Jesus 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 the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I stand to declare upon you upon your spirit man in the name of Jesus I declare and I speak upon you may that grace rest upon you now every Sunday every Wednesday Tuesday or every other day especially in Africa we have people moving from their homes to Christian religious places of worship and on average most believers will tell you I am going to church is that true where are you they say I am in church and the word church has been seldom understood by many believers and um, we've had preachers here and there try to bring illumination to the subject of the house of God and the church. It is my responsibility under God and my joy to enlighten us according to scripture. To understand in addition to the truths that we have learned and we continue to learn. To understand what exactly is the church. The goal for this teaching is to bring us to superior spiritual knowledge as to the implication of being in and being part of the house of God. Are we blessed? Genesis 28. Let's start from there for a reference. Genesis 28. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's begin our reading from verse 10. This is a scripture about Jacob and his encounter with the God of heaven. The first encounter. He had two principal encounters. The first was in 28, chapter 28. The second was in chapter 22. Having been in Laban's house for over 20 years. Now the Bible says, Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Uh -huh. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. The Bible says, and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Now, I don't know how he slept on stones. And lay down in that place to sleep. And the Bible says, he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Follow the dream carefully, 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. At this point, there was no God of Jacob. The land whereon thou liest, to thee I will give it and to thy seed. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Next verse. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to you of. This is a good place for someone to say amen. amen. That God is saying, I will not leave you until I do to you everything I said I would do. Amen. 16. Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Right? So we see lack of discernment here. 17. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? Here was his conclusion. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. In other words, this kind of experience, based on what my father taught me, if such an experience should happen, 
where you have the innumerable company of angels is that true where you have god himself speaking to edify to reveal his promises to show you his ways and to assure you of his presence he says this is none other there is no other environment that can capture this kind of encounter except the house of god hallelujah this is very powerful next scripture matthew chapter 16 the first biblical mention of the word church from verse 13 matthew 16 and verse 13 jesus was with the disciples and the bible says he came into the coast of caesarea philippi and he asked the disciples so the revelation of the church according to jesus began with a question what is the question who do men say that i the son of man am his identity as the son of man and they said some say that thou art john the baptist some say elias elijah now some say jeremiah some say you are one of the prophets and then 15 he said unto them but whom say ye that i am that means these people are giving their propositions because they are far they are not close they've not had the privilege of proximity now that you have been with me we've eaten together we've gone for crusades together what is your conclusion about me and jesus christ was amazed that none of them could speak all of those multitudes the 72 the 12 now they stood and they were completely in limbo not knowing what to say in response to that question 16 and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ thou art the christ the son of the living god 17 and jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon son of jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven now he makes a very strong statement and i say unto you thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it please keep that scripture there it says you are peter and upon this rock now i'm not here to bring up theological debates many people have said the rock is peter many people have said the rock no 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 no. it's very clear from scripture he says you are peter and upon this rock what rock upon this revelation upon this understanding you have had that i am christ the son of the living god are we together now yes upon this revelation i will build my church and if allowed to be built by me it will be so formidable that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it are we still together so jesus here is speaking about the church he made mention of the fact that more than just dying for the sins of the world that he came to inaugurate an institution he came to inaugurate a phenomenon if i would call it called the church and he said that this entity will be so formidable listen carefully it will be the entity that sustains the power to triumph and prevail over the gates of hell the idea of church did not start with the founders of ministries the idea of church did not start with some of our patriarchs alive and dead the idea of church was not just a government initiative to have an institution that supports activities um, that relate to faith and spirituality no the idea of church was god's own invention it was a product of god's own intelligence listen very carefully because many believers view church as several things for others 
they believe that church represents a building that has some level of excellence connected to it where believers come together and then they have the opportunity to worship God. Others believe that church refers to individuals. Others believe that church refers to any platform that carries a semblance of spirituality or any platform that seems to have loyalty to the tenets of the Christian faith. So my question tonight very briefly is what is the church? I'm going to be giving you three dimensions of the church in our discussion tonight. What exactly is the church? Because if you do not know what the church is, you will embrace any definition that the devil gives you about the church. The reason why many people do not respect the church is because they do not even understand what it is. It is a very mysterious entity that the government cannot define. It is a mysterious entity that academicians cannot define. It was not a product of a research from an institution. The church came from the mind of the fountain of wisdom himself. So join with me as we explore three definitions which represent three dimensions to our understanding of the church number one the first revelation of the church according to scripture is found in jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20 please give it to us jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20 it says thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war for with thee i will break in pieces the nations and with thee i will destroy kingdoms uh-huh it says and with thee i will break in pieces the horse and his rider and with thee i will break in pieces the chariot and his rider and with thee i will break in pieces man and woman with thee i will break in pieces old and young with thee i will break in pieces young man and the maid last verse i will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock and with thee i will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen with thee i will break in pieces captains and ruler is there any class of society that was missing here none you are my battle axe i am using you so the first definition of the church write it down please that the church is a spiritual strategy more than a people the first revelation of the church that i want you to have is the church as a spiritual strategy an invention from god's intelligence a spiritual strategy listen to me mandated to be used by god as the only tool that is able to purge to cleanse to build and to reveal christ and his purposes in its fullness this is the church the church is a strategy for instance if um if i have a flat tire or i have a pro a problem with my car and i'm unable to move it i can hire another car that will help to drag it to a place where it will be fixed and a strategy is usually invented where i can connect is that true and connect with a moving car that is alive a towing van and then connect to the vehicle and the towing van pushes it that that is a strategy to remedy for something the fact that the church came into being is already proof that there was something that was not correct are we together now so the church has come as a spiritual strategy to remedy a condition to remedy a situation there are names that were called in scripture one of it is light another is salt jesus christ himself called us light and salt that immediately suggests that for us to be called light means there is darkness for us to be called salt means there is a level of tastelessness somewhere and lack of preservation so the church is a spiritual strategy the church in fact is the only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to reveal christ in his fullness 
and to bring him glory. Please write it down. The only spiritual strategy that has the capacity to reveal Christ, to subdue principalities and powers. Oh, this is powerful. Thou art my battle axe. That means wherever there is darkness, wherever there is confusion, listen carefully, wherever there is lack of growth and enlightenment, wherever the purposes of God have not been made institutional within any territory, it is a reflection that the church may not be there or the church may not be shining as light. The church is a strategy. So do not ask why you are put in the midst of darkness. You are a strategy. God's strategy. Are we together? For every car that you buy, usually you would have a few tools in that car. Is that true? Most people would have a toolbox containing screwdrivers and, 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 um, you know, and um, spanners and all of those things. You would have an extra tire somewhere in the car and you would have a jack you know, to help you if you have a flat tire. All of those things are tools and they are strategies to make sure that for no reason do you stop moving forward if you need to. So when you have a flat tire, what do you do? You go to the back of that car and open up the toolbox and you begin to effectively use the tools that will help maybe replacement. There are times that you can bring out an extra tire that helps to move the car. There are times that you can bring out all kinds of tools. That is how you are. That means whenever there is darkness, God pulls out from his toolbox and brings someone out. The church is a spiritual strategy. Wow. I am not just a man of God. I am a strategy. Do you know what that means? I am a strategy, a tool to be able to achieve something very divine, achieve something very exact as far as the revelation of the Christ is concerned. That immediately cures you from this sense of complex and inferiority. You did not just happen across the surface of the earth. You were a strategy. A strategy takes time to bring forth. Many of you are mathematicians. If you are, you are trying to solve a problem, you sit down, you think, scientists will come up with all kinds of hypotheses and go through all kinds of verification systems until it becomes a theory. You are the final decision of the intelligence of God. Did you hear what I said? Your, your arrival, the church as a strategy, means you are the final decision of a conclusion. The parliament of heaven sat down and thought of how the purposes of God will remain. And you were the conclusion of that meeting. The church is a spiritual strategy. The only strategy that sustains the ability to make kingdom come a reality. Is God speaking to anyone? Hmm. So, when you know this, you do not begin to frown at the church every time you see the church involved in issues that represent darkness. If it is true that the church is a strategy, it means that strategy should find expression in politics, in government, in business. Am I right? He said, I will break in pieces. And he began to list different people. Men were captured in that experience. Women, maids, rulers, princes, captains, everyone. So, the cure for the political decadence in Africa generally is the church. The cure for the economic problems of men. This is the reason why when you say the church has no business in empowering men, you are already, it is, it is um, what do we call it now? You are insulting the very definition of the church. Wherever there is darkness is exactly where we are invited. Is someone learning now? Yeah. Can I tell you the truth? If everybody becomes a preacher called into the fivefold ministry, the church will die. Because that was not, the Bible says some. He gave some. So the proposition that everybody should become a man of God like to preach 
as the way to bring kingdom come is a very sincere but inaccurate understanding. The pulpit is the platform that shapes the understanding of the people like I'm doing. But the real place of assignment is not the pulpit. The real place of assignment is wherever there is darkness. Help me list a few places that you know in our world today where there is darkness. In one word or two words, everywhere. Am I right on that? Someone say everywhere. Does that include the government? Does that include schools? Does that include our banking system? Everywhere. So how relevant is the church? Are you sure the church should be relevant in activities of finances? Are you sure the church should be relevant in politics and governance? Are you sure the church should be relevant in handling demons and principalities and powers? No other strategy sustains the power to do that. Listen, can I be honest with you? Based on scripture and based on history, almost, and I'm, I'm saying this as an opinion, which is grounded on scripture, almost every other religion and institution that I know do not have the power to cast out demons. What happens is called occultic pacifism. Pacifism is an act of appeasal. It was an ancient ritual that was used to appease demons. That means when a spirit comes and is troubling an individual through some um, activity of necromancy and all of that, you conjure the spirit to ask you what it wants. And the spirit can say, I am hungry. You are eating and I have not eaten. And you ask, what do you want? He said, bring one goat. You see it happen in our cultures. Bring one goat. Bring one chicken. Make sure it's black. And so based on what the spirit is asking for, you politely and laboriously go and look for what it's looking for. And then it will seem to pacify itself. You will see that the individual will have a semblance of healing. Then you continue making progress and the spirit will come again. In ancient times, Old Testament particularly, when they found people who were demonized, they were usually stoned to death. Because since they did not have the ability, except for a few people who were involved in casting out demons. And the art of deliverance or, or casting out demons was not something that was really understood, you see from scripture. So, when Jesus showed up, as a model of the church and there were demonic people instead of killing the people he could neatly with surgical precision separate the influence from the individual and when they saw this they said no you are using Beelzebub the prince of demons you have found a way of rising in the realm of the spirit to negotiate your way with this prince of demons. You are just manipulating us. And Jesus said, no. If I cast it by Beelzebub, by who do your own fathers? Because many of them entered into covenants and fraternity with demon spirits. Now look up please, listen. Most of the African cultures today have people who are mediums. Is that true? Their assignment is to be um, the mediators between the spirit entities that control those territories. We have all kinds of names, but they are all the same. So, when a land seems to be barren, listen carefully, when a land seems to not produce optimally, or when there is war and people are dying, or there's a plague or pandemic of some sort, usually, these individuals who can be priests or mediums or whatever they are, they are mandated to go through divination and all kinds of satanic operation to now ask those spirits what is wrong. Is that true? And to do that, they have to use divination and conjure these spirits. Should I teach this now? But listen, listen. The only way you move spirits from one safe location according to them to another safe location is to simulate the habitation of that spirit. Let me give you an instance. Now, we will never glorify the devil in the name of Jesus. But say I were not a believer and say I'm some idol worshiper in the village somewhere. If I want to call a spirit from wherever it is, 
to a festival that is happening. Do you know what I need to do? My first assignment is to study the habitat of that spirit. Spiritually. And then through these sacrifices, I simulate the same environment of that spirit. It can now live wherever it is and come right there and still feel at home. This is the reason why, based on that same principle, God is comfortable to be in heaven and yet live in your heart. Because your heart is a simulation of the throne. So he can stay comfortable in your heart. The Holy Ghost has never complained living in you. Are we together now? Yes. What happens is when you go through that process of salvation, something really happens to your heart. It is heaven manifesting in your heart. Now on legal basis, the Holy Spirit can reside within your heart and find the same comfort that he had when he was on Jesus. Powerful mystery. Listen to me. Most of the problems in our world today are spiritual in origin. Did you know that? And then do you believe that? Please believe. Please in the name of Jesus and in the name of wisdom, believe early. That most of the problems that a man will face in his lifetime, personally and institutionally, are largely spiritual in origin now when they manifest physically they will have political expressions they will have economic expressions are we together they will have sociological expressions medical expressions intellectual expressions but largely the same way all things came from the realm of the spirit all troubles come from the realm of the spirit for further study i make reference to the book of job and you will learn there that nothing just happens in this realm the book of job we've studied it a bit at least chapter one here job was a sincere man who was going about his business the bible says he feared the lord and eschewed evil and then he would offer sacrifices in advance for his children then the bible says one day something happened in the heavens is that true satan was in their midst and god made a boast of job according to scripture have you considered my servant job and then the devil told the lord he said does he serve you for nothing give me the permission to touch him and you will see paraphrasing if he will not curse you to your face and he said okay go i give you permission to touch every other thing but preserve his life sin two there was a certain he kept sending the word that i will die but after three days i will resurrect can i tell you if jesus christ did not send the word those gates will not open because now being dead he did not have a body and according to the law of territory once you exit this realm it will take someone with a body to call you from that realm you cannot enter without a body I know that the gate said, who is this king of glory? But let me ask you a question. Who said, lift up your heads? The same way you can be sleeping and a scripture is saying, touch not my anointed. See, if you don't understand this, you will not understand the ministry of prayer investments. That you can send the word of God into 2023. You can send it into 2024. It is only you that celebrates New Year. The word of God does not celebrate New Year. There is no such thing as New Year. The realm of the spirit is, is a continual... Someone in one minute, can you send words? send words in one minute i am the head and not the tail in the name of jesus above only and not beneath i decree and declare by the power of the holy ghost gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising the favor of the lord is upon my life i decree and declare no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me it will fall in judgment don't be silent i decree and declare a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall i see and behold 
the reward of the wicked that when men say there is a casting down i decree and declare that there is a lifting up in the name of jesus my path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day i know whom i believe and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day i am above only above thrones dominions seated with christ in the name of jesus blessed in the morning blessed in the evening blessed in the afternoon blessed in the city favored by the spirit of the living god hallelujah listen please hear me believers you are being trained to know how to be victorious this is what you are receiving a strategy hear me not a it is not a degradation there are people who are who are beautiful pastors they are shepherds they may not even be very effective teachers but they are homely they can bring everything together when you find yourself operating in an area how many of you have held a bunch of keys and they are all keys but you use the wrong key for a door sometimes it can even enter the hole and not be able to turn it looks exactly like the real key except that it is not i submit to you therefore that you must obtain grace from god to really know what area have i been assigned to some of you are intercessors like anna the prophetess like simeon the prophet find rest in that noble ministry and see it as noble as preaching before a crowd on a crusade ground there are some of you who are kingdom financiers you may never have the opportunity to minister as we are doing but god has anointed you to be the strategy that ensures that the work of the kingdom never fails don't fail in that assignment there are many kingdom financiers who left the work of kingdom financing to go to the pulpit simply because there seems to be some psychological attachment to being on the pulpit especially when you are leading and heading the ministry psychologically speaking you are generally considered if i ask you to arrange people in the kingdom according to nobility of call chances are that you will place people like us in front simply because of the supposed charismatism around our call but you may be wrong it will take god to arrange people according do you know the more god hides you the more you are nobler look at it in the building of the human body there are parts that you cannot see imagine if your heart was on your head you would die when an angry person comes near you he will hold that heart and squeeze it till you die so god kept it and covered it with bones now you ignore the heart simply because it's not the hands and the fingers you are seeing when your heart fails let every other thing be alive you will still die correct so i'm teaching you as kingdom people that the more you are exposed doesn't mean you are not noble every call is a high calling but let me tell you when god intentionally hides you and makes you to play a background role just know that he's protecting you jealously it is a sign that you are truly noble some of the people who pray for me as a ministry you may never see them they may never come on this pulpit i met with a group of women um, a few weeks ago while i traveled to a particular region and i was told that these women very about seven or so of them very very you know um, marvelously helped by god accomplished women and they said apostle god gave us a mandate to pray for you we are your intercessors by god when i saw them i was so broken i said what do i do to these people to let them know that i love and appreciate them 
Now, when you see Joshua Selman doing well and doing exploits, you think he's just a product of his personal prayer life. Until the day we stand before Jesus, you will see how many people's prayer provided the leverage for us to rise to this level. And anybody, listen, let me teach you. The moment you are in a position of visibility, be wise enough to know that the invisible is what bets the visible. Are we together? Because our world is sensual and carnally minded. Chances are that you who is the one in the elevated position that is seen by everyone. Usually, if someone wants to sow a seed now, chances are that he will not give you the seed as my intercessor. It's me you will bring the seed to because he believes I am the one blessing him. But let me tell you, when God's reward system begins to spread around, he will pick you and honor you with the same gravity that he's honoring the preacher. There are people because of their efficiency as God's strategy, praying for men of God, for instance, praying for nations, you will find out that God will covenant with them that their whole family must have leaders. They may not be very educated, but you will never lack leaders in those families. It is God's covenant and His reward system. I hope that one time we'll have the opportunity to, to look at the subject of prophetic intercession. And I'm going to be teaching you the benefits and the blessings that follow an intercessor. But for now, it's sufficient for you to know that you are God's battle axe. Next time someone looks at you and says you are useless, a non-entity, either because some physical results that they expect to be there is not there. Maybe like money, a car, a house, or some, some earthly parameters of defining success. Find solace in the fact that you are a strategy. Every key remains dormant until it gets to the door it was assigned to open. You can hold a key for a long time and think that key is useless. If that is the key that opens the restroom, when you are pressed, you will know how efficient that key is. If that is the key to the kitchen, when you are hungry, you will know how efficient that key is. So that God may not seem to be doing so much physically with you, it does not mean you are not part of that army. It does not mean, it's just that we have not gotten to the page of the story where your relevance is needed. Keep building yourself. Keep waiting, knowing that you are a strategy. Mary, you are a strategy, but if the angel has not announced the coming of Jesus, it will look like you are just an ordinary woman. Be patient. Elizabeth, if, if John the Baptist is not yet uh, ready to come, it will look like you are just some barren woman who married a prophet. I am God's strategy. Number two, what is the church? Is God speaking to someone? The church refers to the men and the women so first the church is a strategy and then the second the church refers to the men and women the human vessels the human vessels that are number one the host of heaven on earth and then number two the executors of god's purposes i will take it again the church refers to men and women that are number one the host h-o-s-t-s -S. we are the ones who host god god will not go and dwell in some mountain somewhere he dwells in believers so the church refers to these human vessels that have sustained the ability to hold this treasure, heaven, in us. And then the church also refers to the men and the women who are the executors of God's purposes. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. He says, ye also, as lively stones, are built, into, are built up into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He calls us lively stones. He says, we are a spiritual house. Though human, we are 
that temple that God resides. He resides in me. He lives in me. The reason why you feel the presence of God on earth, the reason why you see Him manifest on earth, is because there are human vessels that have accepted to be hosts for Him. And number two, there are human vessels that have accepted to be the executors of His purposes. Can I tell you this? Plans and purposes are vain until you find not only a strategy, you find the human vessels that are willing to execute it. i give you an instance. If you come up with a beautiful plan, even a beautiful strategy, say for building a structure like this, you will need someone who will carry that plan and translate it from what is written on paper to this material expression. The church, in addition to being a strategy, we are the executors of the will and the purposes of God. That means every time God wants to execute His will and His purposes, we are the ones He sends. Are we together? Romans chapter 12, please. Give us Romans chapter 12 and we'll start our reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 12 and verse 4. It says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Uh -huh. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. The church does not just refer to a strategy alone. The church also refer to a people. A people. The people. God's chosen people. The ones who become the principal executors of His will and His plan. Let me tell you what that means. That everything God decides to do is executed on earth through the church. Here's how Jesus put it in His prayer. He says, when you pray, ask the Father that it be done in earth as it is in heaven. The earth there is not just talking about the physical land. The first earth is you. Let it be done in my life and then through my life as it is in heaven. That means when there are no human vessels, look up please. Did you know that every time there are no human vessels, even when there is a strategy for God's program, God's program becomes limited until he finds a man. Read your Bible and see how many times God's programs were delayed because there were no sufficient human vessels that were worked upon and trained to be the executors of his will. It took Moses a long time. God had a strategy to save his people from Egypt and to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But he needed a man and then from that man he would mobilize a people. Same thing happened to Gideon when they had come under the yoke of the Midianites. God found a man, Gideon, and from that man he mobilized 32,000 people and they were reduced to 300. And Gideon, alongside 300 men, brought victory for the nation of Israel. Can I tell you this? The church refer to men, not shears. Shears without men is not the church. A good sermon without the men to listen to it does not make the church. The church refer to the men and the women. Based on this definition, you see that this whole idea... Now, I say this respectfully, but this whole idea of refusing people from coming to the house of God to hear the word of God simply because uh, sometimes it's misunderstood to be just a passion to have crowd. No, no. The church refers to men and women. And if those men and women are not there to hear, to be changed, it means that the purposes of God will suffer because there would not be sufficient people to be executors of the same. Are we together? In gathering is your, your, your kingdom responsibility 
to bring in more men to the fold so that they be trained, so that they be equipped, and then they can be used by God. Without men, there is no church. Assume with me, for instance, that I come in here and there is absolutely nobody. Now I'm preaching and I'm talking. All I'm doing is just rehearsals or talking with the Holy Spirit. But as far as church is concerned, church happens when there is God and when there are men. It took God and Jacob to be called the house of God. Even heaven is not called the house of God. It took God and a man on earth. And Jacob said, surely this is the house of God. Even though the gate of heaven. Can I tell you this? If you are a preacher here, or you are a worker in church, you have a kingdom responsibility to see that in gathering never ceases with you. You have a kingdom responsibility, not through force and manipulation, but through revelation. That it is noble every time you bring people to the house of God, you give them an opportunity to experience the ministry of transformation, of building, of training. The more God finds men, the more his purposes can advance. Did you believe that? Yes, sir. The more genuine believers we have within our territory, the more the purposes of God can find expression. When there are few men who call upon the name of the Lord, when there are few men who sustain spiritual intelligence, it's going to be difficult to advance the purposes of God. So we have to continue to pray that in as much as God has blessed us as a ministry and as a global family, there are still many people who need to be part of this fold. And we must continue to trust God that through the signs and wonders, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and through the responsibility of ingathering, God is going to grant grace that His house be filled with men. Not just men who endorse the call of a man of God, but men who can be trained, can be equipped, and can be efficient. Man of God, if that is your motivation for ingathering, fire on. But if the motivation becomes a mundane pursuit, just to bring some accreditation and add to the list of those who are making things happen, it is not a pure motivation. My motivation as a man of God has always and will ever remain to see that God brings as many people who need to be trained, who need to be equipped, and to be released to become um, this vast army that God will use for kingdom come. And this we will not fail to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time you say the church, you are referring to a spiritual strategy. The strategy that brings dominion over principalities and powers and sees to it that Jesus Christ is enthroned. When you say the church, it also refers to men. Without men, there is no church. I repeat, without men, there is no church. That means the extended meaning of this is that every time God sends men to church, we must obtain the grace to treat those men with honor knowing that without men there is no church now it is not a license to come and trouble people in church and people just transfer the pain they've had from office and the pain they've had from other things and just punish the church to men every time god sends those men you are grateful and you serve them the meal of god's word principally and then make sure that within the time that they are under your influence they feel the love the warmth the peace, the fellowship that befits those who are called by the name of the Lord. Herein lies my reservation about ignoring the relevance of men as far as making a church happen. Now, you know, people are subject to their whatever it is that they have 
uh, to stay as far as kingdom come is concerned. But I will never be the man of God who will come here and downplay your relevance and downplay the fact that you are here. The reason why I am effective doing what I am doing is because you are here. Can I tell you the truth? No matter how sound your call is, if God does not send the men to come and listen and be trained and submit to that teaching, you are not effective. For God so loved the world. When Jesus came, his entire attention was on men. Even when he resurrected, he went back to men to train those men to keep helping men. The church refers to men. Invest in excellence. Invest in media. Invest in quality sound but not to the detriment of the men. That means if the church refers to men, the highest attention should not be can believe. The word session, it comes as a system of building and edification for the men. Everything is about men. Man of God, when ministry becomes all about you, there is something wrong. When ministry becomes all about Joshua Selman, the Alpha and the Omega of the activities that happen there, you may be well-meaning, but something is wrong. True ministry is not about the man that God uses. There is a place for the honor that priesthood demands. But I'm telling you, the real assignment of a minister is to build men. If you hate those men, you can never truly build the people you hate. You can never... Let me give you an advice. Again, if you're a man of God or you are involved around ministry, never be exalted too high that you lose touch with the men you are sent to because you will be aborting and even destroying your assignment. The reason why you are called is for the men. Without men, there is no church. We must sustain compassion. We must sustain the, the stamina to deal with men and to do so well. As many of you know, I've had quite a, a, a very serious schedule right from Wednesday. I've been traveling over four states or so, and then this morning, and then right here. And sometimes people say, Apostle, you're stretching yourself too much and all of that. But when I remember that the church is not a building, when I remember Jesus died for, the men that he so loved and loves, the men that he will use to birth his purposes, the men that become the principal conduit for kingdom come, I am motivated afresh to bend over backwards to see that those men are trained. I believe in excitement, I believe in joy, I believe in fun, I believe in gladness of heart. But can I tell you, we must trust God to restore the discipline of discipleship, to make sure that every time we gather, we do not waste the time of God's people. Are we together? By the grace of God, God will grant us grace that every time you come here, everything that makes up the program is intended to be a blessing to you. Men. It is all about men. In as much as it is all about Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. That was his motivation. The church is a spiritual strategy. The church refers to men and women. The vessels that he will use to birth his purposes. Number three, and this is the last point for tonight. The church also refers to an institution. The only institution that is mandated to teach and mentor and build people in the ways of God. The church is an institution. Write it down please. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. The church also refers to an institution. Not a spiritual institution. A physical institution. 1 Timothy chapter 3. The B part says, To behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. That means, whenever you are looking for, there is a place in Abuja they call fish market. 
That means when you are looking for fish, where do you go to? You don't run to a bank. You don't run to a bank and meet the cashier and say, can I have tilapia? Or can I have a shark? Or can I have all of this? They will take you straight from there to the hospital. Is that true? Yeah. That means every time you are searching for a place where you can find truth, truth, being Jesus, truth, being doctrine, truth, being the ethics that make for civil living and intentional living and visionary living, the church is that institution mandated with the responsibility of shaping culture correctly. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. Are we learning now? It is based on this definition that our regular convergence as believers are truths that number one reveal Jesus number two equip the believers number three help in contributing to the moral the spiritual the economic stability of a region the church the church is not just a place for Christians the church is a ground and the pillar of truth two more scriptures are you blessed Hebrews chapter 10 please We'll read verse 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10. The Bible says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 20, 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. The Bible says, as an institution, do not neglect the assembling of ourselves together. Say after me, the church is an institution. Now, I know that sociologically we call it a religious institution. Well, from a secular standpoint, we agree. But from a kingdom standpoint, the church is not a religious institution. The church is a real institution. Are we together? Valuable to God, valuable for nation building, valuable. The church is the principal contributor for uh, as far as the, the um, moral correctness of a territory. is. Any territory without the church will be a territory of lawlessness and mayhem and carelessness and indiscipline and lack of responsibility. When you know this as a man of God and when you know this even as a state, you will respect ministers, not just as some religious by gods who are around indoctrinating people with uh, some kind of spiritual ideas. No, we are contributors to nation building because we are bringing principles that are applicable here and now even though spiritual in context but they have their applicability everywhere the church is an institution are we together next time you are you are listing the institutions that you have we have educational institutions that are mandated with the responsibility of making sure that secular education happens within a territory that people are academically enlightened we have all kinds of institutions we have the judiciary as an institution mandated with the responsibility of making sure that justice and fairness and equity is protected we have a political system as an institution mandated with the responsibility of leadership and governance. The church is an institution. Whenever you are confused about life, whenever you are confused about purpose, whenever you are confused about destiny, whenever you need to find God, whenever the devil is oppressing you and buffeting your life left, right and center, whenever you are, find, you are looking for a place where you find a family of like-minded people, the solution is the church. Can I tell you this? When you want to make good friends, come to the church. Ah, apostle, church? Yes, sir, church. Forget about your experience. The church. The church. There is no guarantee from scripture that God said, I will tabernacle in a bank. 
there is no guarantee from scripture that God said I would tabernacle in a classroom. There is no guarantee from scripture that God said where you gather in the law court, I am there. <clears throat> but God made a covenant with his house that his presence would jealously be represented in his house. So as an institution, the church is the principal avenue for learning the ways of God. The manual for the growth and the maturity of the believers in the church is the Bible. In partnership with the Holy Spirit. If the Bible is administered outside of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it just becomes a historic material. The Bible only comes alive when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is honored. And then we are taught the ways of God. We are mentored and we are guided. Listen to me. Please hear me, believers. During the pandemic last year, sadly, when there was a lockdown for about three months or thereabout, do you know how many people's lives went down, spiritually and otherwise? Because there are people based on their background. They have no family anywhere. There are people who have lost father. Listen to me. People who have lost mother. The only family they have literally is the church. Do we agree on that? There are people who support, financial support, comes from the church. There are people today educated because they were part of the church. There are people who have found purpose and meaning to their lives because they were part of the church. You cannot tell how many people today who have found relevance in their lives only because they came to the church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house. That is why the church is called the house of God. If you are looking for love, you will find it in the church. If you are looking for family, you will find it in the church. Apostle, but my biggest pain has come from the church. That is because the devil also came to the church. So we have to get him out of the church. He's not invited. There are people today when they lose loved ones, they have nobody to come and mourn with them but the church. There are people today when it's time for celebration, marriage, children, whatever it is, it is the church that comes to rally around them. There are people when they are in pains today, nobody can stand but the church. Never you ignore the church as an institution. The church is that one family. There are two kinds of families on earth. There is the physical family that is of biological origin, but there is the spiritual family. The spiritual family is a real family. If you are in church, you must have this family mentality. Coming to church is like coming home. The only place where God can accept you as you are, while He's changing you. Can I tell you this? If you ignore the church, there are many things you will not be able to achieve. There are times that your fire can go down and then you come to the church and you sit down. You know, sitting and hearing the testimonies of these precious people and I'm wondering, what if there was no church? There was no church for three months and some people did not just backslide. They just went completely. It's like they... Do you know that Moses' absence for 90 days... You know what he came back and met? These were people who were calling upon Yahweh. Moses went up the mountain, not that he went to sleep. He went to meet God. He came back and found an idol that was made with the precious gold that God gave them. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. Moses was angry. He made them grind that thing to powder and drink it. And God punished him because of it. You, you, you see how this thing works? He had to go and carve that rock by himself. Can I tell you this? I know that many of you have been wounded from church. I know many of you have had bitter experiences from church. But regardless what has happened, church still remains your zone of safety. Can I tell you this? 
I repeat, the church is the safest place. Everybody cannot be a devil. All you need is to find one person who loves you genuinely. One person who loves Jesus genuinely. One person who prays genuinely. And I can tell you there are enough people in every true church to communicate the love of Christ. Hallelujah. It is God's idea and it is His intention that every believer becomes part of a larger community of believers. For the purpose of, you see, community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. It's going to be difficult for you to excel in isolation. So, when God picks you, He connects you to a larger body of believers. It is your assignment to connect indeed. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my life is changed. Let me tell you this. By the privilege of leadership, especially for many years and even now largely among young people i have learned the power of the church as an institution i have met people who have lost father lost mother and literally have had to depend on the church for everything that their physical family would give them i have had the privilege and i say this to the glory of the name of jesus of helping to raise people literally some from primary school secondary school even university the church there are people today who would never go to school if they were not in church there are people today who would never get a job if they were not in church there are people today who would never find love if they were not in church there are people today who would never even be able to bury their loved ones if they were not in church there are people today who would never have been able to marry if they were not in church there are people who would never be able to take care of their children if they were not in church the church is not a disadvantage please find a way of of believing this tonight the church as an institution there are people who hate anything church and they bring all kinds of stories and all kinds of memories they tell you the church is a place where there are corrupt people there are politicians there are devils there do you stop using the road because there was an accident there that is the only road available the church is a blessing jesus is the head of the church if you don't trust the body trust the head did you hear what i said let me repeat myself if you don't trust the body trust the head the body may fail but the head may never fail he will never fail the church is an institution so as you gather week in week out here in koinonia and all of the churches that are scattered represented in the body of christ i want you to have this mindset whenever you pick your bible you pick your children and you are on your way to church remember this that number one the church is a spiritual strategy number two i am that church in addition to God's strategy, I am the host and then the executor of his will and his plans and his purposes. His purposes depend on me. He can do without me, but he has chosen to involve me in his program. So you don't go to church as a second class citizen. I'm not the one leading worship. I'm not the head of department. I am just a regular worker. Did you know sometimes people send me text messages and they say, Apostle, uh, good afternoon, sir. I am a regular or I'm just an ordinary koinonia member. And sometimes even when I don't want to reply, I'm tempted to reply, there are no ordinary members here. Everyone is the church. 
the nature of our work may seem to provide some level of elevated positions but i tell you intrinsically every single one as far as christ is concerned we carry equal value the value and the price being the blood of jesus are we blessed and i advocate this and i i cry and call on men and women of god as much as possible Give honor to whom honor is due, but we must be careful so that we do not allow the broken and those who feel that they are no good come to church again and further feel miserable simply because you are not wearing a designer's, simply because you don't seem to speak very fluently. I made it as a personal commitment as a man of God that when it has to do with honor, I will communicate honor to all men and to those deserving of honor. But when it has to do with my disposition towards men, I will treat everybody with love and I will treat everybody with sincerity. If I am giving a hug, I'm not going to hug you because you are rich or because you are holding an envelope and then hug another person and look at him and almost be asking, what are you doing here? No. No. It has never been my philosophy to treat people as far as my attention is concerned based on whatever it is. No. Whoever your father is, whoever your mother is, whoever you are, thank God for your pedigree. You will be given honor that is commensurate to your sacrifice. But as far as my mindset and my understanding is concerned, everybody who God brings to this place is a valuable and a special person. In truth, I may not be able to reach everybody. I wish I could. I really will. Sadly, I'm not able to do so. But I'm using this message tonight to talk to you and to talk to our global family that as far as Joshua Selman is concerned and Koinonia is concerned there are no ordinary members everybody who was purchased with the blood of Jesus is a special and a unique person whether you sit inside whether you sit outside I remember during the graduation of the school of ministry students um, I was walking around usually that's what I do because I'm not preaching so I was walking around and I was almost going to look for a place to sit. And all these, my security and protocol people, they would not let me rest. They were doing their job, you know. And I was standing and people were watching me as though it was Jesus Christ. And I said, come on, listen, listen. I'm a human being. My mother is alive. My father is alive. It is only the privilege of God's grace. I only sit here because of leadership, because of protocol, and because of the assignment. The day I'm not doing that assignment, I should be able to sit anywhere and feel comfortable. If I cannot do that, I'm only insecure. It has nothing to do with God. Because my value is not based on the position. My value is the revelation of who I am. Learn this. Are we together now? So, if you find me seated somewhere up there, and I sit in between two people, and I'm listening to the word of God and say, wow, powerful, this is great. Chances are that you can even be uncomfortable there. Believers, listen to me. I have an assignment to see that you are grounded in truth. And that every time you say church, so for people who neglect the gathering of the believers and they say church is just in the heart. Correct them and say you are right but not completely right. There is something you only receive when believers are gathered together. Are we together now? That corporate gathering, Psalm 133, behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, to his skirt, to his garment, and so on and so forth. He says, there God had commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Now there are two things we are going to do before we pray. Please rise everybody. I'm going to give you a little task in one minute. You're going to walk around to as many people as you can find in one minute. And even if it is to appreciate them and greet them. 
and tell them we are the church you are valuable you are blessed bless them with all your heart don't waylay anybody go ahead make sure you're doing it inside and outside honor them and appreciate them sincerely you don't have to know them Together we are the body of Christ. Regardless what you believe, regardless what you don't believe, regardless what family you come from. It's a culture. Now please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hold hands together if you can. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls the pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments. Listen to me, let me encourage you. Never make it a culture. Never look down on anyone. In terms of stratification, in terms of finances, in terms of spiritual exposure, in terms of enlightenment, the truth is we are not at the same level. Nevertheless, you should be comfortable to hug somebody whose father is some relegated thing somewhere. This is the church. They should be able to find that kind of love without explanation. Love without reason. The moment you have a reason, it is no longer love. So someone comes to sit near you and you frown your face because you are all wrapped up in your designer. They say, turn to your neighbor and you just look at, don't you turn? No, 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 no. You may be saying no to the next 10 years of your life. Can I tell you this? There have been times before, you know, God made me a known face. There were times when people began to hear about me and what God was doing. But because the people had never seen me, they did not know this was the apostle. And, you know, it was not the best of experience. And then when they did find out that I was that man of God, they suddenly came back with some uh, hypocritical approach. And I said, no, no, no. The first you is the real you. That you that did not behave well is the real you. So make it a point of duty. The first core value in this ministry is love, not power. Love. Everything is motivated by love. Are we together now? Yes. That when they share the grace, you don't just stand up and carry your children and you push everybody and go out. No. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. You are going to walk after the service. Oh, God bless you. This is very important. You may think this is just some childish Christian thing, but you may be healing. Someone right now may be listening to me. And finally, people are looking for a home more than a sermon. People are looking for a home. You can listen to a sermon online. You cannot find a home online. There is a difference between listening to teachings online and being in the presence of God here. A place of genuine laughter and love. No pretense. Are we together? It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Jesus. 
Some of you, if you had, if you had your way, you would reject that part of the song. I don't need you to stop. You do, you do. Come to terms with it. Listen, God is not ashamed to declare how vulnerable He is towards us. I need you to be an effective preacher. No matter how anointed I am, your coming here, among the many things that it does, is it validates the fact that we are a blessing. There is nothing to tell lies about. There is nothing to be ashamed about. You see, when people know you are sincere, they will love you truly. But when you are playing games and doing all of these things, the people would let you know they are not stupid. When people come here and there is room for interpretation, maybe the miracle service, the moment I understand they are struggling to speak English, I tell them, stay any language. Be comfortable. I'm not going to respect and honor you just because you are speaking Polish Queen's English. That is an advantage, but not the basis for the love. Provided you name the name of Christ, you deserve to be loved. I pray tonight that this teaching will help to build our understanding and make us very, very mature believers. We are going to pray. Our time is gone. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me to be effective as your battle axe, as the man that you will use in this season. Please, we are praying. And then number three, as part of this institution called the church, lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I am your battle axe. Use me for your glory. In whatever way you see, and however you please. Go ahead and pray. I will go. I will go. Everywhere you lead me. I will go. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. I will go. I will go. I will go. I am your battle act to whatever nation, to whatever region, whatever the responsibility is. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul said yes. Someone is praying. Lord, I am that available battle axe. Sharpen me and make me ready to be used especially in this time. Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, please don't do it without me. We are praying, don't be tired. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do. Listen, whoever you want to heal. Lord, you can heal 
Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Very powerful song. I'm available. Use me for the change. Use me for the healing. Let me not be the one causing the pain, but bringing the healing. Whoever you want to bless, whoever you want to save, whoever you want to transform, oh God, I'm here as your church. Find comfort in using me. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, and we're done. Please hear me. We must pray first for Koinonia and then for every church as a local assembly and every platform that provides a gathering of believers. Can I tell you, we cannot lose the church as an institution. Westernization should not be the reason why we lose the gathering of the saints. There is a blessing. The church is a platform for mentorship that builds, that trains, that equips. It is the place where people can find God. The church is a city of refuge. The church is akin to the ark of Noah. When rain was about to fall, they found a place of safety. Are we together? This is your house. Your home. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome this is your house, your home. We welcome you. Last prayer point. The grace to be an active part of this institution called the church. Lift your voice and pray. Active through in gathering. Active as a worker. Active. As a, as a participant not a fan there are no fans in the church there are active people praying, serving bringing souls providing financial resources Lord whatever role I have to play to keep this institution that is the pillar and the ground of truth alive I obtain grace go ahead to pray Pray for every local assembly you know. Lord, keep them. Keep that institution. Keep the building from being idolized. But let it become a center for transformation. A center for salvation. A center for encounters. The house of God. It is only in the house that God has commanded the blessing. May His favor be upon and a thousand generations. Your family. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations. Receive it as a blessing. That's what you get when you come to church. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations. Your family, your children. Amen.
father we pray that koinonia will remain a place of encounters we pray that koinonia will remain a place of revelation we pray that koinonia will remain a place of transformation we pray that koinonia will remain the house of god in the name of jesus christ lord we declare from tonight's teaching that we are willing to be sharpened battle axes that you will use to beat down the gates of darkness lord we declare that we are the men and women you have found worthy to become hosts of your presence and advancers of your purposes and lord we thank you for this family koinonia we thank you for every church and every ministry represented in the body of christ oh god strengthen the bond of fellowship bring unity over your body let all the walls of the divides the prejudices and all the things that divide us and weaken our strength i pray oh god that they will fade in light of what you are doing but as for this ministry i pray that you will increase our bond of love you will increase our bond of fellowship that in truth we will love one another without discrimination we will love one another without favoritism we will love one another in spite of our different levels of stratification in the name of jesus lord we commit ourselves to love one another we commit ourselves to loving you and we pray that in and through our lives jesus will be revealed we pray by extension oh god committing our global family scattered across all the nations of the earth in the name of jesus we pray that that bond of unity and that bond of love will rest upon every one of us we pray for the teachings the principal channel that you have used to extend your blessing through us to the nations lord anoint those teachings afresh may they go across the length and the breadth of this nation and across the globe may they bring salvation may they bring healing may they bring liftings in the name of jesus christ and as for you because you came to church tonight i decree may the lord bless you i decree may the lord prosper you i decree may the lord reveal himself to you I decree that everything that has mocked God concerning your life as a result of your coming tonight I prophesy and I declare that it ceases from happening in your life I sense in my spirit that there are people who whilst they heard this our brothers and sisters sharing their testimony of financial miracles their hearts were just open and they said oh that god would step in for me the prophetic dimension to activating wealth like i've always thought is not a license for laziness but there are times when you are in the sea there are times when your net is good there are times when your fishing skill is there but you will still not catch fish at that point you do not need fishing skill you need jesus and for those who have exhausted all that they know to do and it looks like financial doors are not opening i prophesy to you in the name that is above all names return with strange miracles please just help those under the anointing everyone here who is sick in his body the devil has taken advantage of you not the church the church is a place where we separate light from darkness i decree and declare that everything that represents darkness in your life let it be far from your life now and everything glorious in your life that you have lost for, the, for people here, there are people, the proverb, Ichabod, seems to be the proverb around your life. I declare, may that proverb never be heard around your life again. Every business here, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, the grace to excel, let it come upon you. 
every dormant gift that is lying down within you I decree and declare that gift is activated and all those who can discern and reward that gift I call them to pay attention to you hear me if there is anyone here whose spiritual life is going down prayer life going down your passion for God going down don't feel condemned and don't feel like there is no hope for you this is the church the place where you find hope therefore I decree and declare fresh fire upon your spiritual life for everyone here who has been bereaved and is in and through any kind of emotional pain we decree and declare let the healer bring healing right now And we stand here prophetically and we lend our voices together with many who are praying over Nigeria, over Africa, over Abuja. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the purposes of God will be established in our land. In the name of Jesus. And every controlling power over this territory, the territory of the FCT, the nation of Nigeria, the continent of Africa, we lend our voices as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a united force, we decree and declare, like Dagon fell before the ark, we declare that every altar that does not project Jesus, let it fall before the ark of his presence. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you, the Lord honor you, in Jesus name please everyone remain standing let me plead with us just give me two minutes let's be disciplined two minutes let me make the altar call please no moving around just two minutes and we're done there are people here God has given you an opportunity to hear this word tonight you came from various places please let's minimize movement it's it's a culture listen you have to train yourself in the house of God patience for two three minutes will not stop you from doing what you're doing as much as possible whenever the altar call is coming except otherwise let's just discipline ourselves to receive them and then we'll wrap up there are people here across the balcony here in the main auditorium all the overflows and following online you are saying apostle I've heard you teach and I want to become part of the church the church is not just men men who are in Christ men who have accepted the free gift of salvation two categories of people I want to call quickly number one those who are saying I need Jesus as a matter of life and death number two those who are saying apostle my life has gone haywire I need restoration to my Christian experience if you belong to any of these two categories I'm going to count one to five please very quickly I like you to rush and come and stand be very bold don't be afraid don't be ashamed God bless you let's celebrate them as they come who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? Keep coming. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Keep coming. Amen. So is the power and the glory for Hallelujah. Now, before I pray for all those who have come to give their heart to Jesus, let me just make one very important announcement. Please let me have your attention. By God's grace, our medical team um, is embarking on an outreach to one of the IDPs here in, Kadu in, in uh, I was going to say Kaduna, in Abuja. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you happy to celebrate Jesus? Amen. Um, can I have Dr. Chai please come? 
He's the head of the medical team. Please quickly just come. Now, the medical team is searching for volunteers. Volunteers who will participate in the medical outreach, particularly they are looking for doctors, nurses, lab scientists, and pharmacists. All interested persons, please, if you are interested in being part of this outreach, is a noble cost. When is it the date? 4th of December. So we have just on Saturday. On the 4th of December, you are a paramedic, you are a medical person, and you feel that this is an opportunity, you want to be part of it, please, immediately after the service, he's going to be standing right here. You can come and meet him and say, I want to be part of it. And probably you want to just come in and support them in whatever way. We have taken responsibility as a ministry, but then we're also going to open up doors. Should you want to do anything without coercion, by revelation, from a heart of love, please feel free to do it. And so this is what test running our humanitarian services. So the medical team is leading on this and we want to see that we're able to bless the people and to bless God's people. There are so many people at that IDP camp and we want to just supply food, medicals and see how probably we sink a borehole or two or just do something for the community. God is granting us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, immediately after the service, you want to be part of this uh, as a volunteer. Please do well to see doctor. He'll be waiting there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I celebrate every one of you for coming. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Please lift your right hand high above your head. And I want you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I have heard your word. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I live a victorious Christian life serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity in Jesus name amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious people we love them so they have come before you making their declaration to start a new life in Christ I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and I decree and declare that you enjoy the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Thank you and congratulations. May I request that you just move to my right. There are a few counselors who will just attend to you within a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. And then Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.